Hello, everybody, and welcome to Last Minute Kickout. A nice little trial vidcast slash podcast slash whatever Kev decides to do with this uh, on the Last Minute Continue site. Um, we're just going to talk about one of uh, our favorite things, which is wrestling. And uh, joining us, or joining me, is uh, the boss man of Last Minute Continue himself. Hello, Mr. Kevin Eva. Hello. And longtime contributor to Last Minute Continue, Mr. Turbo, John Finley. How are Mrs. you, sir? Mrs. Finley's baby boy. Mrs. Finley's baby <laughs> boy, that's the one. Oh, yeah, Mrs. Finley's baby boy is here to, you know, right here on Last Minute Continue. <laughs> <laughs> Cheap pop. Yeah. So, yes, uh, this will probably be maybe once a fortnight or depending on, because we're going to do it mostly around the, the pay-per-views because it's a lot easier and... Uh, all three of us do not do this as full-time work, but doing it on a pay-per-view scale is a lot easier for us to try and manage instead of, yeah. As much as we'd love to spend every waking minute talking to you about something we love, pay-per-views are good enough for us for the moment. So, to the inaugural episode, we had Hell in a Cell, the SmackDown pay-per-view that just aired recently. General thoughts before we get break get, get into breakdowns, guys? What are you thinking about it? First but you've got to say it right. Hell in a cell. <laughs> yeah, I really need to clean out the throat there. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I've swallowed a cheese grater this morning. It's fine. Oh, uh, it's like the, the ninth. It's like the ninth Hell in a Cell pay per view. Ninth, yeah, ninth. Uh, yeah. Ninth Hell in a Cell pay per view and the twentieth anniversary of the Hell in a Cell match. Oh, really? I did not know that little. That, that was actually. heavily. That was heavily advertised uh, through, or like heavily talked about uh, by uh who's, who's coming yeah uh, tom, tom phillips uh ah, mainly tom phillips was talking about mm -hmm. it uh saying that it was the 20th anniversary of the hell in the cell 1997 was the first uh hell in the cell um uh, match yes i do remember that it was the anniversary of the the undertaker sean michaels with the introduction of kane that was it that's gonna be kane <laughs> bad blood 97 can never eight. forget but yes, uh, general thoughts of the pay per view before we break it down match by match. Um, overall, for myself, uh, I was watching it live, and uh, the overall it was pretty good. I don't think it could be as high as what other people have been uh, saying it's been. Um, there were a couple of duds. Uh, you know, a couple of matches were duds, and uh, some some of the stuff was a little long. We'll get into it later, but um, uh, overall, it was a good show. It I'll definitely say, even though we're not going to be talking about it, uh, it's definitely better than Mercy from uh, last month. So I would certainly agree with that. Uh, it was definitely better than No Mercy, um, but yeah, uh, it was a good pay-per-view nothing particularly wrong with it like like turbo said a couple of duds but i mean you, you always get like the odd dud on the pay-per-view really well um, not 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 every match can be great and no. i mean even even if you look back to recent pay-per-views there have been kickoff matches which have been better than the actual main show matches oh, so we'll get to that <laughs> oh yes, we will. Um, no doubt. We'll but, um, that. but but yeah, um, but enjoy enjoyable throughout for the most part. I'd agree. Um, I'd say it's a good pay per view. Be definitely better than the last SmackDown one. That felt like a bit of a letdown. Uh, uh, I can't remember the name of that one. It eludes me right now. I think it was Battleground. It might have been Battleground. Yeah, that makes sense. Actually, Battleground had quite a few throwaway matches, and uh, definitely better than No Mercy. I'd say it was on par with what SummerSlam was this year, actually. Um, I thought SummerSlam wasn't a, a really good show. Uh, again, had a couple of throwaway matches. Well, the problem, but, with, um, problem with SummerSlam, especially for the kind of like major four pay-per-views, is that there are so many matches on the card. Oh, because it has oh it's a four-hour show now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, like it, it, it was a pay-per-view that really suffered from fatigue. Uh, again, something we'll probably talk about later. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, the kickoff show match. John, how about you take us away with the kickoff show? What was your thoughts on that? On well, that I only match? I only like tuned into the kickoff show halfway through, but it was uh, before the actual match. Uh, the yeah. kickoff match that we had 
was a tag match with the Hype Bros and uh, Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin. Um, it uh, it was a match. <laughs> like um, I, I I got a couple of notes here. Um, I'll I'll definitely say Shelton Benjamin was definitely on top form, regardless. Um, during that I mean, match, just- as well as Chad Gable. For someone that's not been back for very long, but has been on constant TV, I mean, he's going to be pretty much peak performance, especially on his uh, coming back off the injury he had that delayed him on TV yeah. originally. Um, man, I sound so smarky right now. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we um, all going to be? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, but yeah, um, it was a good it was a good match. I just don't know where they want to go with the hype bros right now. They're obviously trying to push for a heel mark, and I thought when uh, Zack Ryder came down in his own gear rather than Hype Bros, we were going to see uh, a heel turn in that match mm. and see Zack Ryder go on his own yeah, from but, there but, on. But because it was on the pre-show, I think exactly. they wanted to wait until TV to yeah. actually do it, oh. put on a SmackDown show. I don't think they know. Well, they they've been on and off of it Bros. for yeah, they've uh, kind since... of gone both sides. In terms of who could, they've got okay. Someone's gonna turn, but we're not sure who. It could be both. Yeah, Cause the, which they kind of teased a bit well, with one of, the, one of the promos previously. Yeah, yeah, because that uh, what was it? The kind of like the build up to this was only like um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, where Chad Chad Gable and Sean Ben being interviewed on backstage SmackDown, which and, they showed at the yeah uh, match, yeah. Yeah, so they just called out, called them in the match for the kickoff show, and uh, uh, really, you know, for uh, the angle and whatnot, it's not really much do about the two teams going at it. It is just dissension with uh, you know the hype bros, mm-hmm. uh, which will ev- eventually happen. It's just uh, when will it happen? Could be, mm-hmm. could be tonight. This is being recorded on Tuesday um, uh, on SmackDown. It could. A couple of weeks from now, could be that next pay per view. Who knows? Um, in I terms we'll of, ma- see, I think we'll see more build up with where that's going. Yeah, hopefully. Um, whether we see a continued continued rivalry with uh, the actual boys themselves, like uh, Benjamin and uh, Benjamin Gable versus the Hype Bros, I don't know. Well, I think I think that 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 storyline is going to be best progressed versus random tag teams on the division. And to see, like, oh, well, maybe we'll do better against this team. And, you know, we'll see that go from there. And they'll lose against everyone and then they'll just implode. Maybe that'll be the direction to take that line rather than going uh, WWE's normal 50 50 booking. Yeah. Well, that's essentially going to be the case for both teams, essentially. Because yes. That's where it's essentially going for both, um, which is a bit dull, but nevertheless. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the work rate of the match itself, um, uh, like I said, Chad Gable and uh, Sean Benjamin were on top form. Uh, there was one particular spot uh, during the match where, uh, oh yeah, it was Chad Gable uh, doing a belly to back suplex. Yeah, and then that looked particularly onto the, grim. Yeah, and then doing a, a moonsault afterwards. And this was after a failed moonsault attempt that he landed on his feet on. Mm-hmm. That was probably the highlight for that match uh, from me personally yeah uh i i i'd agree to to the most part but it ha- it just has the normal staples of um i think the best part of the mat- the actual match was the the beginning of that match where we actually saw some proper ring psychology of like holding like the other tag team partner away from the ro- for like more than just a couple of tags like, yeah for a I, good, I, solid like third of the match they were doing that and i i thought that was really good and led to it could have led again into part of the storyline for the hype bros of like, well, you didn't do anything, you just left me there. You could have come in to actually do something. Yeah, there was a lot of kind of like good tag team work with uh, mm. Sean, uh, Chad Gable and uh, Shelton Benjamin against uh, either um, uh, Ro- uh, Mojo or uh, Zach. So, Kev, your thoughts? Uh, so, I mean, I'm I love Zach. Uh, I would other shame Zach. Mark. I'll tell you this much: the crowd didn't care too much about him <laughs> at no. one point. No. Uh, no, when they were going for the hot tag, the crowd was dead. Yeah, 
I, on the whole thing. That might be so, But <laughs> in, in all honesty, all, all, all I will all I will say is um, there was actually some really nice storytelling going on, um, hmm. not only from the commentators but in in the ring itself. Uh, the crowd popped when we got uh, Benjamin and Ryder because it was it was it was the two veterans and there was a little bit of a circle and the crowd even even early days um, early days for that crowd they were pretty hot for that uh, and then we had some nice chain wrestling after that some nice reversals uh, there was uh, the bit beforehand with uh, Zach versus uh, Chad. And there was the, there was the handshake, and there was the mutual respect thing, and and then that played through because you know they had the series of reversals with with Ryder and Benjamin, and then well, sort of you know same thing respect, and then he got punished for that, and it was a, sort of an example of how you know i think they'll play that will play back into the storyline because it was just like zach trusted and either mojo i think you're a, you're a fool to trust uh benjamin was like well you know whatever interestingly chad gail was really annoyed at that he was mm. able to with with, with ben, he was like what the heck are you doing um because and, and, and ben was like, eh, whatever so maybe there's actually some going to be some dissent on the other side as well that, yeah that's that, what it's that, kind of leading start. to um I, I mean i mean i agree because if we remember all the way back to when they introduced benjamin on smackdown we had gable being incredibly cocky straight off yeah. the bat it, 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 it's it's interesting um but so you so you have that you've got the, the failure of of, of that and how that could affect the hype bros you, that, that can go either way like i say there was actually some good little harking back on the commentary team i really like the smackdown commentary team that we had um uh with well, the exception of, with the exception of saxton i completely Sa agree Sa saxton i could you know I, I i'm still of the opinion we need to go back down to two man commentary teams if it um, were, if we lost saxton i'm not sure if it would make much difference Saxton's but... very good for um almost sort of more natural reaction to things i mean yes but saxton also brings to the table the same thing that um oh what's his face uh does the one they replaced with booker t on raw oh um additional booker t yeah well <laughs> they replaced booker uh, t with more booker t but booker t booker t is a prime example um but it's like they have natural reactions to things, but what they say quite a lot of the time is irrelevant to what's going on. Oh, uh, yeah. And it draws away from what the commentator should actually be doing in terms of casting the actual match. Yeah. And but, it's really annoying because I like them as... I like them for what they've done. I like them for the time they've put in. But in part of a commentary team, they do draw back a lot on what, they, on what the commentary teams could be doing. Okay. Like, it, work, it works well... But the way they've got it set up is they've got they've got the normal play by play, and then that we've essentially got two Jerry, we've got one Jr. and two Jerry Lawlers essentially. But we've got in terms of the spec, the commentary team, we've got Corey Graves doing a bit of both. Like it's it's, it's very hard because on, well, on... well, well, it uh, it only makes sense because Corey Graves is trying to be more Jesse Ventura than uh, yes, uh, no, King. absolutely. Yeah, I so agree with that. Any, anyway. um. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the match ended with uh, Chad Gable getting the pinfall win uh, on uh, Zack Ryder in uh, 10 minutes and 20 seconds. It's actually not bad for a kickoff show. Um, it's quite lengthy in, in the comparison terms, yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, there, there was uh, one promo that was leading into the main show as well on the kickoff, which was um, uh, Ty Dillinger getting put into the US title match. Uh, yeah. The pro the promo was good. Uh, it was funny. Uh, I think it went on for a little bit too long and became a little bit too tiresome because they were expecting more crowd to join in. Mm. But as evidence during the match, there was no crowd there because there were so many empty seats during that kickoff show. It was, it felt like a SummerSlam moment, uh, like when the Miz and um, the Hardy uh, Boys. Hardys, yeah. Like, yeah. Um, I would like to add on top of that the uh, the promo that uh, uh, Baron Corbin had uh, after that was also on the show, which ended up kind of like a um, uh, a, 
a Scott Steiner light promo <laughs> uh, of math. Yes, it was like uh, yeah. it was. It was a little, a little bit like like that. He said, like, "I only have a thirty three percent chance of winning now." It's, it's like I thought he was gonna go into the whole spiel, but nah. Nah, this is Baron Corbin we're talking about. He's not uh, going right over yeah. <laughs> into it. But no, I had a a little small chuckle when that was uh, when he was whinging about uh, the, the how uh, the single uh, singles match he had originally wanted turned into a triple threat because yeah. of Titan. And it was unfortunate because at that moment we knew exactly what was going to happen. With that I mean, I mean, you're not wrong, but we'll I get went to that. <laughs> I, 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 I went into this feud and watching how it progressed, thinking the match should have been a triple threat anyway. Mm. Like everything leading up to it makes it feel like it should have been a triple threat off the bat. Uh, one quick, one last point before we get off of the pre-show. Yeah. What, what on earth was David Otunga wearing on his head? I have no idea. And now you've just uh, reminded me, David Otunga was the the other yeah, uh, person who was Otunga. supposed to be on Raw. But uh, but no, um, it was it is questionable what he was wearing on the pre. I wasn't really paying too much it, attention. It, it, was, it, it was some kind of hat. I don't know what. <laughs> uh, it, it, something. <laughs> I think they it was some headdress of I, some. No, it was, it, was like, it, was like, it was like some. Considering what we've seen him in previously, he was wearing some kind of beanie, and it just like yeah. it was just like what? <laughs> it's 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 the style of the time. Nice, apparently. Nice. <laughs> Careful, he's a movie star now. Or is he now? A serious a movie, movie star. star. Is he now? Oh, this is where David Otunga comes back as part of the Miz <laughs> <laughs> Oh, don't uh, like Miz. <laughs> so do I. So does everyone. Oh, so why are we saddling him with David Otunga? <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know. Booking. <laughs> I don't know. Because anyway. they have something in common. Anyway, anyway yes. Uh, let's move on to the pretty, mini card. Pretty much the, the pre-show. I think it was a pretty solid pre-show. Um, again, better than most of the other stuff that we've seen previously from other pay-per-views. The, I don't know, though. The main show had a, a really amazing kickoff match in terms of the New Day versus the Usos in Hell in a Cell. Uh, for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, which was an amazing match, uh, in all honesty, <laughs> they've they've stolen the show on so many SmackDowns and pay per views recently that the fact that they were kicking this off, I think, was just basically because they were spreading the two Hell in a Cell matches out. Yeah, how many times have, have has Usos and New Day been on kickoff? I think they actually said this when they had their sort of um, yeah. promo in ring where they sort of said oh, about. Ah, yeah, uh, they were on the kickoff show for ring. Battleground, I believe. Yeah, and they sort of they've said, you know, how many times have we done this, and how many times have we stolen the show? The two, the both mm. teams, the two of us. How many times have we done it? And yet again, I totally agree. What an amazing match in terms of creativity, stuff we've not seen in Hell in a Cell before. You know, they they were conf they were confined in the sense that mm -hmm. they actually had to obey by confined in the cell. Because hey, we don't want to blow all the obvious things of her to sell. It's like hey, you know this, you know this structure that you're not supposed to have anyone get in or get out. It's amazing how often you get out of it. No, absolutely. And so, I was expecting, I was expecting someone okay. to get away for to like make a way out for um, Kofi to get in, but it didn't happen, and there which was, was astounding. There was some sweet ass psychology going on with that. Yes, lots, lots of it. Um, in terms of yeah, not just the inside, outside the cage, playing with Kofi about how you know mm -hmm. he couldn't do it, doing a lot of the stuff in front of Kofi, and Kofi was like yeah, obviously really torn. Um, but I think the create there's creativity everywhere in terms of what was going on. Really vicious stuff. Like I mean, oh, the yeah. very first thing was like just throwing the chair at Woods with. Venom. Woods is um <laughs> one of the one of the one of the spots I mean there's a lot of spots, but the one that really stood out for me was um uh when Woods was going when Biggie was knocking one of the Usos down and Woods just suddenly out of nowhere comes in and does the Batbreaker. Yes. Um, it was yeah, I that think was like such a it was like a rock bottom off of or, or you nagi off, Yeah, it was yeah, a, off of uh, the Biggie Nagi like a lung blower. It was such a scary thing, just out of nowhere. It was, My it was very, God. It was very close as well, because I actually thought that uh, Woods almost mistimed it and uh, nearly kind of like uh, uh, 
uh, injured himself there. But no, he... I think he, I think he did something in his leg. No, he, um... he previously hurt his knee, mm. um, which is the why it was it was braced. That was the the, the injury he was coming off of. So he, I think he probably mm. hurt it again. But yeah, I think not. that was that was after he'd been squashed mm. in, yes. in the corner as well. And that was pretty because his head pretty much went into the corner of everything, and it's like ah. Um, a couple of things I point out. Biggie's crazy. How many yeah. dives he, he? How many dives he did in that match was an absolute. It there was, was a mind boggling. I think it was like the first proper suicide dive he did, uh, where where no one else was in the way, or not, and he, like you saw the cage bend. Yeah, it was just like yeah, the, the very God. Th- it was right at the beginning of the match yeah. as well. The, the cage immediately, and it's funny because actually Shane went into the same spot later mm. on. And that was just bowing like crazy at that point. Uh, um, yeah, Big E definitely. Cr- yeah, crazy. One other, one other, uh, a couple of other notable spots uh, involving um, uh, the Usos. I really loved how they used the kendo sticks to pin one of the Usos into the one ca- of the corners of the cage. Yeah, yeah the kendo and, cage. Yeah, that, yeah was... that was that was probably the most ingenious way of using those kendo sticks and the cell and long- i don't even think anyone's actually done that I at all no there was a lot of spots anywhere. in this yeah there's a lot of spots in this match but i mean when was the last time we had a tag team hell in a cell match i mean that's oh well barry yeah a tag team tornado match no there was a tour there were there have been quite a few tornado tag team matches of late well um, not, not to reason they, they no, to not to reason memory on my end did. but uh in, in I think it's like... because it's been on a house show rather than a pay per view. Mm. Aye, um, but yeah, I. It's still it's uh, having the additional use of the weapons as well. Like it, it didn't feel like it was overdone. It felt like it felt like the match was just long enough. It felt like just about the right amount of stuff was used, and it felt like just the amount of storytelling was told as well in this match. Like speaking of stuff that was used, mm. Xavier Woods. Thank you for the Mortal Kombat reference <laughs> with the gong. <laughs> and now for a taste of things to come. Bang. Nice. Oh, that, that was, oh, that, oh, that, was crazy. that whole musical musical instrument se- segment was actually yeah. good. Yeah, uh, yeah with I, I mean, as well. Oh. Yeah, granted, I'm not the biggest New Day fan, but I, I did appreciate that, and I appreciate everything that uh, both Biggie and Xavier Wards were doing in that cell uh, with so it's like, uh, mm-hmm. especially... Uh, the next another uh, spot moving on is uh, the Usos uh, handcuffing uh, oh, both members, mm-hmm. and especially Woods, who took a absolute beating with. Do you know, uh, do you know what that Kendo's spot name. reminded me of? Um, um, Shane McMahon and Kane. No, also Rock and Cena. Rock Foley in the I Quit match. Oh, I mean, granted, Rock Foley. Uh, Royal Rumble was way more brutal than this. no, absolutely. But it was but, more, it was more the handcuffs and then just the br- savagery un- of the weapons. Yeah, yeah, unprotected savagery being hung from the post with the, with the cuffs. First of all, mm-hmm. and I think uh, what was it? Himself. Yeah, there was a photo that uh, Xavier Woods put up on his Instagram yeah, that went up, video and video. Uh, yeah, that was like he the is, welts he, he put is put on that. Up. There. Yeah, from mm-hmm. that he, he really is. Um, but again, it, it was it was really good. The, the the use the savagery of the Usos played in a lot throughout this match. Uh, yes, and I mean we're talking a lot about the, what the New Day did, and a lot of their stuff was you know quite mm-hmm. you know show PC. But throughout the Usos were you know, very very vicious. Um, the 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 beating that Woods got, um, which if you could ever if you could ever put a wrestler through a match and then at the end of it everyone respects him because Jesus you're a man <laughs> that was a <laughs> the only one well, of the few disappointments I have about the match is that afterwards when Big E got up because Big E was obviously been, had been taken down for Woods to be beaten I wish they'd let Big E run Riot a little longer because he got up and yeah. he was pissed and it was like they did like a few, a few hard slams and, and what have you. And I think he, I think that might have been when he hit the big ending. I don't know, but I mean, I mean, in terms of the storytelling for this match, 
The only thing I'm unhappy about with the way they're going, like we got it. It went into the match build as the end. This was going to be the last match, regardless. Which, but that instantly makes you think that the new day were going to retain. But because the Usos won, is there no rematch clause? Uh, well, this is the same case when Charlotte and um. Sasha Banks had their last match, and Sasha Banks was the champion. Charlotte won yeah. the title back, I think, mm-hmm. and then they didn't have a rematch after that. I, I, I think, think it, I think it was, I think it was more. They were trying to go, okay, this is the Usos' last chance. And yeah, not, it's back of the queue. So I mean, I mean, well, where, where, where do they go from here? I mean, well, we'll find out on tonight's SmackDown. I yeah. think. Uh, but uh, I would think. That they might want to change it up, put another tag team up. I mean, no, absolutely, again. because uh, I think the only the only way those tag teams can go anywhere from here would be an I quit match. I think that's literally the only way they can go forward from this, which means there's another essentially no disqualification with weapons matches, but it's the only way you can realistically call it an end to the storyline. It would yeah. then play that would actually play really well into Woods's beating. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, um, but yeah, the overall ty- uh, time for that was uh, twenty-two minutes, which is actually not bad. Actually, you know, twenty-two minutes of uh, all that action happening uh, in the ring there. Uh, you know, it practically flew by at times. So, you know, yeah, uh, but yeah, uh, Usos got the victory with what was it? Um, what was it? Their double splash on Xavier Woods with him having a chair on top of him. Chair assisted. Mm-hmm. Uh, really, uh, a good end. Yeah, you know, an end. It was a good ending. It was a good ending to a good so, match. Yeah. Aye. Absolutely. What was the next match, John? Uh, next match was that of uh, Rusev versus Randy Orton. Oh. This was not one of those good matches. That this I, is. I this is earlier. This is a standard thing of either WWE caving to keep Randy on their good side, or just mistreating Rusev. And I think it's a bit. It is. I think it's a bit of both, and I think it's uh, also a case of SmackDown don't know what to do. It's holding at all. pattern. Yeah. It's we please do this feud while we try and get you into a place where we can do so, and it it was kind of obvious during the match I Orton has for a while just wrestled looking bored yeah but that's just Orton in general yeah, but um, Orton's not happy because Orton wants to be a heel yes Rusev's not happy because have you seen Rusev's career the last yes, years? Well. Um, why wouldn't Rusev not be particularly happy uh, and it was just it's a feud that just went nowhere. It was a match that went nowhere. Apart from yeah. one glorious moment at the end, which which we'll get to, but uh, for, well, for me, I, it was just a waste. Well, it was, what, it, yeah. yeah, one thing that I was completely annoyed by is uh, in the week's fault, uh, building to this was uh, Aiden English, uh, mm. kind of like being a associate with Rusev and whatnot. But he was never here for the match. He he was on the pre-show. I totally yes. forgot about that. He was on the pre-show. He was on the panel. Uh, I hyping, uh, hyping up uh, the, the match and uh, putting you know Rusev strong. But he wasn't there. He didn't make an interference or anything like that. No, he didn't put anything into the match itself. It was uh, a bit disappointing. I'm, I'm st- I, there was a tweet that went past when I when I was watching it and, and I, I just happened to see it. Which was, which was, so so. Why are we supposed to be annoyed with Bulgaria? Why, because why, foreigners. Why, why is Rusev a he? Why is Rusev to us supposed to be a heel? Apart from he is foreign man. Yeah, it's like it, that. It that weird. that whole gimmick is so outdated now uh, that yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, but it's, this is the problem with the current bookers though, and it's not going to change until the old guard passes. It's old guard, old ideas. But unfortunately, because of the way America America really is, um, and America is always USA, USA, anything that shows America 
in about, especially recently with everything that's happened over there. Uh, anything that Americans can do to prop themselves up is generally a good idea in you know their eyes, I imagine. So um, I don't know. Where, should, this this if, that would make sense if they'd stuck with Rusev being this Russian hero, but they 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 wrote themselves out of that. Yeah, for I mean this, this I is can't remember now. This for Rusev. This has gone wrong all the way back. In, to when Rusev was meant to be debuting on SmackDown and meant to be going to Shane, I want my championship match. Mm. Uh, was... bit... No, sorry, no, jumping no, after you. I was going to, I was going to talk about the end of the match, but if you have something else, no, to... no, I'm I'm only no. gonna uh, fucking secondary thing. So you just thought <laughs> about the match. Keep us on topic. Right. Oh, um, uh, the only thing I can really talk about is the end. You know, pretty much the ending was pretty the highlight, really. Um. Uh, was it Randy Orton doing a D, uh, doing the DDT? Uh, uh, then Rusev was able to counter uh, Orton by almost putting him into the accolade, and then Orton beautiful. counters that, and then pulls off an RKO and gets the pin. Uh, yeah, which the I thought was match, yeah, yeah, I thought it was actually a decent spot for finishing that match. But uh, afterwards, I don't know how. How quick the, I, I've forgotten the passage of time of that, but uh, Rusev was already out of that ring, walking out uh, up the ramp quite quickly, even mm. after the replay. And I was like thinking, wait, isn't an RKO supposed to like put them down, like you know, proper, proper? You know, it's like, yeah, okay. So it just goes to show you that Rusev doesn't two two monkeys about it. Uh, yeah. um, and also, this match went on for eleven for eleven minutes forty. I'm thinking really, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, for what it was, I mean, both wrestlers not really caring so much. And... There, was, there was not a single match on this pay per view that went under ten minutes, mm-hmm. and and for some and so, for some of the matches, that's not a good idea. I yeah. mean, I mean, the card was specifically announced, I believe, early in the show that there were only so many matches, but they were big name matches. Like, I mean, just check and double check them. And... Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven matches. Yeah, I was, eight, I was right. Yeah. yeah, and uh, yeah, every every one of them was over the ten, uh, ten minute mark. Mm. So, but I mean, I don't know. It felt long enough. I just didn't care because mm. we knew who was gonna probably like. I would have loved Rusev to have a win and actually walk away from that match, but with the, how badly he's been treated, I just you know, there's no, there's no care going into that match for me. Like I've got no investment if that's the word yeah i've got no investment in that match because i i'm not the biggest orton fan in the world i he's very boring to watch like every match is now for orton it's like oh it's the rko out of nowhere so yeah. he goes to pull it out of nowhere it gets blocked he goes to pull it out of nowhere it gets blocked and rolled out of and then he he'll pull it out of somewhere in the end and then it's and then it's over like, yeah and why and... is the rko rko become this match ender like I, because memes. <laughs> yeah, well. Um, yes, but in all honesty. Yeah, um, but it, uh, I'll say I'll say this: it, even turning him heel will not do anything because the man's been he's he's essentially the the mirror image of John Cena. He's been in with the company for so goddamn long, yet he is not changed in the last. The, the, decade. the only. Yeah, the only reason for Randy Orton turning heel would be for Randy to have more fun with what he's doing. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, um, that, and that's just for him. It doesn't matter for like and, the audience. And the thing is, with Randy's character, he can turn heel by doing nothing. Yeah, yeah. it's just literally what is Randy Orton like when he's heel? He's Randy Orton. What is Randy Orton like when he's face? He's Randy Orton. Mm. It. I mean, you you only have to watch the storyline with Bray Wyatt to see that. He was just Randy Orton. Yeah, it was all along. You, you were the real monster, Randy Orton, because it turned out you were Randy Orton. Uh, the one thing I should get before we get off this match, um, and John mentioned it earlier, uh, mm-hmm. the thing that really irked me about the match because it's like, yeah, we know nothing's going to happen in terms of in terms of forwarding anyone, but I can't really remember Rusev having a moment so much that he could go at least go away from the match with you know somebody going ah oh, rusev did 
you know, this. And at the end, when Randy was doing his thump, thump on the mat and signaling for the RKO, as, as John said, there was this wonderful moment where Rusev grabbed both of his fists from laying down on the back while he's back, grabbed both of his fists as he came down and like rolled himself back over into the accolade almost. And had they actually gone through and actually been put into the accolade, people would have been, the crowd would have, I mean, they started to pop for that. And mm -hmm. then it was like, cut. it was cut off. But it would have been this great moment. It wasn't something we'd seen before, reversal-wise, on, onto that. Uh, it would have been, it was something new. And it would have yeah. given Rusev this one moment where he was actually going, hey, look, Rusev was able to do this. I stuff. think that would have been a great finish to the match, It would have been a great finish. And then have Autumn reverse out of that by all means, or, or sneer out of that, but at least do something... At least let him lock, at least let him lock it in, or at least half lock it in, as opposed to just getting him sort of half straddling him. And the, the the problem is, I can already see the meme coming out of that as being the accolade out of nowhere. <laughs> hey, it'd give Rusev something. And oh, that, yeah, would. that would be no, something absolutely. he could play off of. That I could put you in the accolade out of out of nowhere even when you least ex when you least expect it. But instead, you know, it didn't. It, it, it was like half a reversal and it was like oh, he's out of it oh, RKO match over Rusev's walking up the ramp as, as John said uh, mm -hmm. it just hurt me because that was it was such an, it was such an original reversal to, st to yeah. stop the arts to stop the process with the RKO and it was sort of wasted and it's so difficult to get something that's new to have something that's like oh that was really uh yeah, just, that's the it, problem. It was the sh it was the shit cherry on top of a, of a very mediocre cake. It was almost like it felt like it was a piss break match. Probably was. <laughs> it probably was, but then I've there, got was, there was in the black. I've merch there, please. Or yeah, it. I'm... <laughs> Give me but I mean, there's checks. there's still a couple of other things that felt like it tonight as well. Mm. Like good pay per view, but there are a couple of these matches. Um, John, what was the next match? Um next match was probably uh, a good one for the uh, kind of like middle of the uh, point of uh, the pay-per-view. It was the triple threat match for the United States Championship uh, pitting AJ Styles uh, against Ty Dillinger and Baron Corbin. It felt like a good match mostly because quite a few of these guys still feel that like they've got stuff to prove. Less so for AJ Styles. Uh, compared to Baron Corbin and Ty Dillinger. But Baron Corbin's obviously, with the way we've all read and found out, has got a lot to make up for. Ty Dillinger's, like, they apparently it was his first SmackDown pay-per-view appearance, uh, even though he was on the Rumble and he was on the Kick Show, I believe, earlier on in the year. Yeah. This is his first proper pay-per-view appearance. So they obviously just went out there with uh, a good match to show. Yeah, it was also a title match as well, so... Mm. Uh... It's definitely a good showcase for Ty uh, and a a AJ. The their chemistry, like their chemistry, was definitely good. I mean, granted, all of them actually did very well with each other. Um, usually, the problem with triple threats is that they tend to kind of like uh, you know focus you know on just two wrestlers for a good while and then just swap out you know after a bit and then focus on them for a while. But no, it. I felt that this match had a little more flu fluidity between the three competitors and interchanging the kind of like different pair ups. So you had like AJ and Baron Corbin, and then AJ, Ty Dillinger, and then Ty Dillinger, uh, Baron Corbin, whatnot. It kind of like swapped it out quite well, I thought. Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, I like the start where they both hit uh, Baron Corbin. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was, that was, that was quite funny. <laughs> that, that, was, that was your, that was the typical kind of like, uh, uh, you know, faces going after the heel. Yeah, well, the heels uh, going after the face. It, yeah. it, it was logic in the beginning of a WWE match, which is always nice to see. Ah. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I wasn't too. I think it was a good match, match, but there was nothing memorable about the match, with the exception of the ending, where it looked semi botched by Baron Corbin. Uh, of just pushing AJ out of the ring, but there wasn't 
anything mem- memorable to it, which makes it stick out in my mind and go, this match was brilliant. I remember this, this, and this. You know? Uh, like, if we maybe got an end of days on somewhere that would have just put somebody out of the match. Like, what? Like the best thing about it was, like, phenomenal forearm, Baron runs in, takes the shortcut by pushing AJ out the ropes, gets the pinfall, wins. But, you know, we had... With how some of their finishes work, there was such an ability to have some spectacular spots somewhere in this match, and they didn't. It didn't feel like they took that chance. I, I, think... I, I don't know. I mean, AJ took a quite a number of good bumps uh, on like failed attempts at some of his moves. Uh, I mean, I've got one note talking about one uh, phenomenal forearm he was about to do. Baron Corbin just like blasts him, oh, and he oh, like he just bu- dropped dead. Drop dead, yeah. <laughs> I he thought, jeez, yeah. So he AJ was like selling like a boss on that spot there. Um, uh, I think there was like another one uh, later on uh, that uh, AJ. Uh, I oh yeah, I, well AJ's uh, what was it uh, 450, um, Springboard splash, 450 Springboard Four uh, Fifty Springboard Four Fifty. I love that. That was a distance as well, and he landed. Yeah, no, yeah, no. That was that was pretty good, but. My my point was is that I don't look back at that match and go I remember it for this point. No. Yeah, I mean like, it's 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 definitely not like uh like intercontinental triple threat circa two thousand two thousand one no. era mm. kind of like uh you know memorable me- memorable kind of like moments. Well, but I mean I mean you border on nostalgia there. Yeah, for how far back you are. But I I'm more talking about exactly what we talked about in the the tag match at the beginning of the card. Like you look at that, and there were such memorable spots there, we, like we the talk Kendo about Cage. That tag and everything match else. Basically, the entirety of the show. That's how good it. Yeah, was. That, that's how good it was. But there are there are memorable spots after memorable spots. The US match felt like it was a very safe way to try and get Baron and Ty over to the crowd. Yeah, it, was... it, it definitely was. I I can definitely agree on that. For for me, I didn't like it. Actually, I didn't. I didn't. Oh. Like, I didn't like the match. It felt very much like Ty could have been anybody in that match. Uh, to me, in terms in terms of what he did in it, it could have been absolutely anybody. And I don't think they did enough in terms of putting over how good Ty is. Okay, I, I'll give you that one, Kev. Uh... Um, I mean, yeah. This, I mean, this is something you mentioned when we mentioned about the pre-show and Ty getting put in that match, and you knowing where that match was going to yeah. go. You know, we knew at that point going in. Okay, he's eating the pin because you've put him in there to eat the pin and project mm. AJ Styles. Does that actually help? I mean, would that have harmed AJ to have lost? To have, I say clean, to have to lose and be pinned by Baron Corbin? Really, no, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, yeah, well, that's all it is. It's all it's done is it's hurt Ty Dillinger. Well, it's, it's, it's done. Um, in terms of in terms of the match, same as same as you, Pete, it was just like a case of like things happened. Yeah, AJ bumped like a boss because he's AJ freaking Styles. I swear, every time he does that back body drop and he goes up, oh, he, yeah, and he's freaking vertical for a sort of, and then he switches his body weight and then he comes down. Every time he does that, I'm just like, oh, please do not die. Um, and I can never stop saying it. I've got, I've literally got four notes for this entire match just to get. First of all, Baron Corbin didn't get his nickname read out in the intros, which I thought of was very funny. Because we we had the perfect ten and the and the phenomenal one and is Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. <laughs> that was quite funny. Um, another one which was just a case of I couldn't hear it, but it ended up sounding quite funny as a result. Was Baron Corbin out the ring? The crowd started chanting something at him. Where's oh, your briefcase? Where, where's your briefcase? Oh, where's your briefcase? Because no, yeah. I didn't hear what. Where, where, where's your briefcase? Well, I was trying to, and it sounded to me like, "Where's your regain?" Now, to, to, <laughs> what, explain, to, any, to explain to any American wow. viewers who is who are who are watching this, uh, regain is the UK uh, brand name for Rogaine, aka <laughs> hair replacement. Mm. 
like hair replacement tonics and what have you. So inadvertently, like, so that made me really laugh because I thought it was that, and I had to quickly look about it. And say, oh, it's not that, but I yeah. wish it was because it would just been so <laughs> perfect to be enchanted. <laughs> um, a the other notes I've got is AJ can officially fly. Uh, the, <laughs> there was a like a, a, a throw slash hip toss pretty much out of the corner. AJ just went. Oh, that, that was Baron Cor. That was Baron, Baron Corbin yeah, throwing. Baron, Baron just flung him, and he like yeah. twisted around. It's left. like one, from one corner, almost to one corner to the yeah, other. Yeah, he, he almost like coast to coast, just with a throw of AJ Styles. He landed really hard on his hip as well. I was like, yeah. Kind of, I was kind of wincing at that. AJ's got enough problems as it is with his back and stuff. Well, well he's got he's got DDP yoga. He's fine. <laughs> Yeah, there's only so much even DDP can do, and I know you're a you're a, you're a paying customer and all, John. But it's, <laughs> um, but, even, but there's shill. only so much. The, the you man, shill. Every time, every time that we, sh- yeah, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> We're not happen- sponsored that happens by happens DDP to be, yoga. That happens to However, be one of his yoga moves actually is yeah. Um, and the other one is there was um, oh age because that was the other thing with the back. Uh, AJ did. A Bret Hart esque move where he actually did the, the a slide under the under the ring post, but like cur- like going back first into oh the yeah, ring post. aye, and it didn't quite work, mostly because of the way the the ring posts are shaped nowadays. I think yeah, but that was a very sort of Bret Hart uh, move, and, it, and it, it, you very rarely see it done nowadays, um, and it looks like it kills you, um, probably because it does. <laughs> But well, with the amount with the amount of extra stuff around those ring posts these days for the extra Titantron esque look, I, um, yeah, I hate any this. tight. I don't mind them, um, but it does mean that there's a lot less done. Even though there seems to be a lot more apron like ring apron stuff done mm-hmm. these days, um, to, it, uh, it does make them stand out a little bit more. I was going to say, things. tell that to Cesaro. Yeah, I mean, he was able to make use of them. To, I think they're wow. dangerous to person. Like, I see why they've done it because it's like, because uh, hey, that, and also hey, you've got an extra platform now, so it's mm. easy to perform top rope stuff. But at the same time, yeah, it's a bit too much for me. But anyway, I thought that was a that was a, a good move. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, uh, so we've got Baron Corbin picks up picks up the win, following a pinfall, and see, I didn't actually mind that he kind of fumbled getting AJ out. Yeah, because I... that, that came across as like more frantic. Um, yes, no, it, it did. But... Um, but the way it was done, the way the kick happened, it looked like it's like oh, I've kicked. Oh, but I missed, and then I've yeah, got I've gone to kick him again. It, it looked it looked looked more like it was uh, a fuck up rather yeah, than semi botch. Semi botch. Yeah, yeah so, that's yeah. the one. It's it's one of those where it's botched, but it somehow can still play. Yeah, and yeah. save. And s- yeah. safe. But yeah, no. But it it it, it yeah. the way the kick was done, I do agree. It adds more to the the viciousness of Baron Corbin. The way that yeah. that looks. Well, that that is obviously supposed to be his character. He's this lone wolf that's just trying yeah. to. Is he? You know, I'm pretty certain they didn't. Say. But they didn't say. They didn't he, say, he, they announce he's... him as one. But uh, Ooh. You know. Ooh. but uh, no, he, he, he he's always scavenging for trying to. Just trying to, you know, get his away. Way. Is it all, yeah, that, yeah. That, if they if they actually kept that up and with his character, it actually. I mean, as long as I mean the the opportunist guy, then that would be good. Obviously, going forward with this storyline, we're going to see more AJ versus um, Baron. Unless you know, I presume you guys watched Talking Smack. Uh, yeah, I did watch it after. I'm sure we'll. we'll I'm sure we'll make mention. Time. Yeah, I'm sure we'll make mention of it, but um. AJ seems to lean towards doing other things other than teaching Baron a lesson. So whether they'll move on to a Baron and Ty Dillinger instead. If you were AJ knows? Styles, you'd want out of that program pretty quick, to be honest. I don't uh, think there's I don't think there's anything in there for AJ to gain and more to help Baron get elevated. Yeah, and they... plus AJ, you know, from last year's performance as WWE champion it's best for him to be back, back into the main events scene to try to go after the WWE Championship again. I uh, agree. So, you know, 
I, th I think this is going to be a perfect opportunity for him to get back into that race. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we'll talk about the, uh, our thoughts on the championship scene for the main title <laughs> when we get to that oh, match. Oh, yeah. But um, it was nice. It was a nice run while it lasted. US Championship. Thanks for having some good matches. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, we're, I don't we're not think... expect to get for a while. <laughs> I don't think the US. Why are they using AJ Styles to pick up on everything Cena has done well? Um, like, because I think the idea is that it's playing off that he's better than Cena. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah. based on his kind of like skills. Uh, he he is a person that can elevate, um, you know, things. I, I agree. Obviously, they want agree. to elevate the title. But I don't understand why AJ needs to do an open challenge. I don't I won't understand why AJ had to take, you know, some nicknames out of a feud he had with Cena and take it, like, running and, like, use that thing. Like, it feels like he's AJ's being less of his own person at times and more what John Cena has pushed onto him. It feel, at times, it feels like it to me. Um, I, yeah. I'd like I, I, to see... I, I, see why, I see why he did the open challenge, because he was kind of honouring the thing that that kind of got him his uh, break and his feud with Cena. And it was, it, that was the, the open challenge was the thing that started that whole ball rolling yeah. uh, in terms of opportunity. Um, as, as for the other nickname, uh, the champ that runs the camp can kindly go and die. As a nickname. <laughs> I don't think, it can go and well, die in a fire. He has, it's well, he hasn't used that for a long time, that one. But the uh, face, no, but do they not still introduce him as the face that runs the place? Nope. He's no, just a phenomenal one. Done a, uh, they can all go. He's the phenomenal well, one. Gra well, well, Grant, well, well, I was going to say, the face that runs the place and champ that runs the camp are all heel persona. The guy Curry. you can guarantee to have a good match with. But he, but <laughs> SmackDown <laughs> is still... SmackDown is still the the house that AJ Styles built, yeah. which seems more heelish than anything else. But it's it's but so, it's I, something that the crowd is with. No, absolutely. I love chanting his uh, chanting. Um, so I, think, I guess that well, stuck. But it also doesn't play well that he was using that with TNA, as the TNA mm. is the house that AJ Styles built. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. wait, SmackDown is SmackDown's TNA. Well, we've got Bobby Roode, I guess. So <laughs> you know, yes. Uh, moving moving on to the next match, though, I believe it was the women's championship, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Uh, uh, with uh, Natalia versus Ch uh, Charlotte, for the women SmackDown Women's Championship. And Natty um, breaking the record for most uh, pay per view appearances by a female performer. Indeed, the record that mm. was previously held by Trish Stratus and well deserved. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I think it's also part in why she has a reign at the moment because she's been there for a long time and she's put the work in i mean she she's only had what one other championship run i think one no she she's held Divas she's champion. held all she's held all three belts isn't she she's held the women's championship when it was it the was... women's championship divas and she's held the the new women's champ don't i don't think she held the women's she definitely held the divas championship okay, uh, but yeah, it's been it's been years between reigns. Yes, no, it's absolutely been a long time. Yeah, and um, there's, there was plenty of opportunities prior to this uh, run that uh, she could have easily had the championship and had a good run with it, but uh, you know, the booking committee didn't want to give her that uh, opportunity. I'll tell you this much: uh, thank God she doesn't wear cat ears uh, to the ring uh, <laughs> after this one. I hated that. I know she loves cats. I'm a cat lover. I, I'm a lover of cats as well. I love cats, but I am not obsessed about them. She shouldn't have had that as a persona of her character on on TV. You can leave that on Total Divas, that, that, but that's, don't that's put the writers, it on. To that's the writers not knowing anything else about yeah. her. That's, and, that's that, and that's that what's ridiculous. About I'm, I'm glad she didn't have the cat ears on uh, tonight uh, uh, at Hell in a Cell. Uh, she looked obviously more. Obviously, she's a heel, you know, um, character champion at that uh, this time, and she needed to act like one, and she acted like one uh, in this match. Um, uh, 
Uh, obviously, uh, a couple of notable things. Uh, obviously, it, it, it's obviously that. Well, what, one problem I did have with with uh, the promo before the match um, is oh, it's obviously reflecting about Charlotte and uh, her emotional distress with uh, Ric Flair being hospitalized mm -hmm. and whatnot. I really hate it when WWE do that. Uh, they did it before with. Uh, Charlotte and her brother, the Page feud a couple of couple of years ago. Yep, and that was tasteless. This could have been even more tasteless had Rick Rick Flair. Well, I caught. just don't think they understood the direction that they wanted the storyline in this match to go. Uh, many times during the actual commentary of the match, they were talking about uh, and leading up to the match, they were talking about. It's the hearts versus the flares. It's a, a thing we've not really seen since the early nineties. Which is and bollocks. Then... Because no, no, uh, yeah, of course it is. Yeah, because we already we saw this in NXT. It's like which uh, they oh, then uh, said. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> but you got to remember. Point? You got to remember that NXT isn't canon WWE television. So uh, well, apparently, based on Asuka's uh, <laughs> kind of yes. like promos, I think it is canon, being that she's undefeated. Oh well. But, Remember, well, later on, this, uh, we're discussing this sort of um, uh, lack of continuity between what they're, what they're saying. Later on in the Ziggler Rude match, we had about how, you know, Rude's not made it in WWE, he's not made his mark. And then it was just like five seconds later, it was like, yes, Brood, who's won the who's won the NXT championship. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean, this is on. the this is the problem with trying to have stuff and set up as a separate brand, you know. And I mean, you can see it a lot with Two Hundred Five Live as well, especially at the moment where everybody's really invested with it, with Enzo back on there, um, where it's like. So nobody, after the first big thing where Enzo's like, I've got this piece of paper, any of you touch me, no one gets it. And then they do this whole big after Raw goes off segment where everybody hits Enzo with a finisher and everything. So nobody's allowed it. And then the following episode of 205 Live, uh, bloody Davari is chummy with him. But then back on the next episode of Raw, nobody's allowed the title match and like everybody, even Davari's against him again. I'm like, there's there's no continuity between the branding at the moment. And if they want to make 205 Live a good brand, if they want to make NXT a good brand, they need to actually fall in and give the thing its props that it deserves to make. So turning around, like they'll they'll throw an offhand comment like, "Yeah, they were NXT champion, you know, they did really well," but then not really making the mark on WWE, as you said, Kev. It's just like, mm, yeah. what? Uh, and we, we we had Shinsuke Nakamura, who was the same thing. He was just like, oh, this wonderful NXT guy. Just like, well, if they've both been champions, yes. how is one guy this wonderful thing, and the other guy just like he's never made it? Yeah, I know. Yes. Anyway, um, but again, um, the match felt like it went into it the wrong way, storyline wise. It felt like it had a direction that it was meant to be leading up to. Like, they were waiting for Carmella to come down and cash in because it was a very slow-paced match, and it was just like Carmella would come down and then they would fend her off. That's what the match felt like it was going into me, but then Carmella never appeared. Yeah. And it's just like... Because she, she's been off TV as well recently, so I don't know what they're aiming to do. It feels like they're going in a weird direction with this. Mm. Like, I, I don't understand why you would make Carmella a threat on the house shows by cashing in in throwaway matches and then not do it on a big pay-per-view. You want her there with the briefcase, even if she's there as a guest commentator, just there with the briefcase. I, I, liked, I liked that period, the, the period where she's been, she has been there, like literally sitting in the corner, like as this constant threat, because no one's really done that. No one's really just, got, okay, every match you're there, I'm going to be there. Hmm. Better not lose. Yeah, like, it's it's normally um, like they have that little tease at like mm. the go home show, of yeah. a, of a pay pay per view coming up. But uh, with uh, Carmella, no, she's been like a, a constant hounding, uh, kind of like intimidation character with that briefcase in tow. Yeah, uh, like, and her treat and her treatment to Ellsworth as well. I can understand um, if having Carmella always there is over exasperation of the character. 
but it also adds to the storyline that she's meant to be a constant threat with a briefcase, which we all know mm -hmm. after how many goddamn years that that thing is a threat. And you can, it, it, you, can, you can play off it. You can play off it like the, the fact that yeah, she's always a. Even just if you just don't have her do anything, yeah. Because you have no reaction. Like have her, have her, have her had no reaction for like three weeks, and on the well, fourth like, and on the fourth week, just have her like just stand up, and just sort of move towards, and then sort of go. Even even having anything. her music come off, her walk onto the stage in the middle of the match still adds to tension even if she does nothing yeah you know any, just any time just have there have her appear in the just, crowd have her appear in the skybox yeah you know, just, just needs to she just like that briefcase needs to be a constant threat it needs to be it doesn't matter who carries that belt if she, carmella chooses not to cash in at any time she needs to be present as a threat and it adds to that storyline and it adds to the maliciousness of a heel character and you don't even need carmella there you, is it you, you, saying about the, 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 the symbolism? You don't even need Carmella there. All you need to do is just like show the briefcase, mm. show it like back, show it backstage, like behind the curtain. Have a character just like just have it, just have it just sitting there. Yeah, so, like, having it just, or just you know appear on the stage or what have you. Lights go out. Lights come back on. The 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 the, 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 the actual case is there. And it's like no, like, absolutely. Well, you got you got to make the. Money in the Bank briefcase, Bray you Wyatt. Know, yeah. <laughs> you, you know. You know. You just, 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 you, you <laughs> the whole point is it's like a, it's a, a psychological thing anyway. But you actually stop playing mind games by just having any, any where the, the, Natalia goes or whoever the champion goes. It is like every time that they go in the court, there's the case. Or they mm -hmm. see the case. Or, there's a, or whenever there's like, she's trying to do a, po like a, a promo, so there's a poster behind it which shows the case. You start See, sort of building it that way. But anyway, John, that never John's just put, because we didn't have John, Carmella. Uh, John's so. just John's just put this wonderful idea in my head of actually Bray Wyatt having the money in the bank briefcase. That's, that's and what then he's just saying. like, I mean, it's just like all of a sudden, like in the middle of a match, lights go out and all of a sudden, lights go back on and the briefcase is just there in the middle of the ring and they're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to see. That just sounds really funny to me. So, I don't yeah. know why. So bookers, WWE bookers. 2018, Money in the Bank, Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt, Mr. Money in the Bank. You'll have Please. tons of fun with that. Yeah, absolutely. Two things immediately. One, the briefcase is Sister Abrogate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, don't... Two, open the briefcase, it's full of maggots. <laughs> oh, God. And or maggots. Some ring, Ma some maggots or masks. Maggots. Or, or, or worms. Depending on how it goes. Uh, yeah. Yes. Trying anyway. to get back trying to get back on topic. Yeah, uh, the this, match itself. The match itself was okay. It was yeah. serviceable. It just felt like it suffered from the wrong jumble of storylines on what they wanted it to actually be. That's yeah. all it did to me. Um, I'll, de was... I'll definitely say that Charlotte Flair was on top form with uh, a couple of uh, moves. Uh, the power bomb that she did to um, uh, Natalia. Natalia. Uh, on, from the, I think it was the second rope. No, I believe Natalia so. Doing the power bomb. Uh, Natalia yeah. doing the power bomb. But uh, the, speaking sweet. of the stuff, it was a very good power bomb. Um, but the moonsault that Charlotte did felt a bit off because obviously yeah, she didn't cool. connect with it. Aye. And uh, um, I also don't understand the finish of the match because Natalia wasn't behind the behind at any point. So I don't understand why the disqualification was needed. I think it. Do oh, understand go ahead. that. Go ahead. Because the thing that they were playing off in terms of the story match and why it felt odd was because you with, with the heel being on top was that Natalia's entire game plan and they they kind of they sort of set it up on the commentary but didn't do a very good job on it mm -hmm. um, was that she wanted Charlotte to tap out. That was the that doesn't didn't that was her entire game. Okay. Yeah. The the work the leg, work the leg, work the leg. You are going to tap out, which she already has done. But I think she like wanted to be like on the paper, so it's like more meaningful than yeah. Okay, that's you then done. That's then Charlotte. But if she taps out twice and she doesn't on the paper, then that's her, that's her done. So that was why she yep. was working, working, working. Okay. Um, and then it wasn't working anywhere, which led to the frustration. Just like you know, ah, oh, sod this, I don't need it, and then just whacked it with whacked it with the chair. Okay. Um, the sit so that power bomb was really nice. Uh, Natty's now got this spot where she gets thrown back head back head first into the turnbuckle. Please mm -hmm. stop doing that. 
Yeah, that's a bad that, way to do work. Yeah, that's not gonna help matters. Actually, yeah, it, happened, it happened to Bailey accidentally, like two pages ago. And she got ago. knocked loopy. And yeah, she yeah. she got knocked loopy, and it looked really nasty. Um, but I think Natty's done this a couple. Of, please stop doing that. Um, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte is. Charlotte Reed does not work as a face. I'm sorry. Um, uh, no, she doesn't at yeah. all. And, and especially um, as face in peril. No, um, not when she not when she towers over no, the rest of the division. No, no she doesn't. Uh, the moonsault was uh, bad. I, 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 don't, I, I, I kind she's of done it so well, well before. She she's done she's done it so well before that I can only think it was just something on both their parts. Like it didn't it didn't feel like. They they got the communication right, and yeah. Daddy was expecting it to land somewhere else, and I think Charlotte was expecting it to land somewhere else as well. So it all went a bit pear shaped. Um, Charlotte forgot which leg was hurt at one point when she was trying to yeah. get up. No, yeah, like, yeah, I she, she was like, that, yeah. she was like, she's selling, 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 and then she's like, was it this leg? No, it's this leg. It's this leg. I said, I think, is it this leg? Let's just stick with this leg. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. It's good that you caught that because I totally missed her. Forget yeah. which one. I, for, I completely forgot about it actually, much yeah. like the leg. The um, um like I said, the moonsault was bad, uh, but not nearly as bad as Natty's chair shots. Uh Natty, you cannot swing a chair to save your life. No, she can't. Uh, Charlotte, well, she could do she could do absolutely wonderful things and the amount uh, we'll have to get onto this at some time, actually, the stuff that Natty does for WWE, not in the ring. Because yeah. there's a whole lot there that we could discuss at some point um, in terms of actually how important Natty is seen inside WWE, mm-hmm. but not in the ring, ironically enough. At least not yes. in the ring publicly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, the, <sighs> Natty's chair shots was just like. I, ah! just think, I just think that that <laughs> chair shot would have served so much better if the ending of the match was Carmella comes out, has the briefcase. Natty hears it, panics, grabs the chair, goes for the disqualification, it, and then it's goes, like, yeah. bring it. That ending would have made so much more sense to me. And it's just like you, you also get then you escalate it with Charlotte because there's Charlotte's annoyed yeah. because it, it just would have made so much more sense as an ending. It's I don't know uh, honestly, uh, but that's just me. Uh, yeah. I'm just a I'm just a casual fan that's slightly smarky, so. Like I said before, aren't we all? Yes. Um, let's let, let's uh, move up. Uh, we don't have a match next. Uh, it's the return of the Fashion Files that came about. Don't know if you guys are. I like the it? I like the Fashion Files. I don't think it was necessary to put it on a pay per view as a return. Well, seeing that um, they kind of, they kind of missed it out on last week, uh, the week. The, oh, yeah. the home on the show, show yeah. on SmackDown, and everyone was pissed about that. Apparently, it's like everyone did not like that whatsoever. The thing um, is, is, is that Brizango has found the thing that gets them over with the fans, which is the comedy stuff. Yeah, um, which is the which, same as the New Day, essentially. It's like New yeah, Day, but had it's done that... in a very different light because the New Day work well on the mic, whereas the Brizango is clearly working better off off of the actual crowd live and actually you know when they mix that comedy into what they're doing in the ring yeah as we saw it's, like so a it's basically of weeks ago. it's basically uh they're getting over material that we've seen which yeah. was evident in this uh in the first shot that we saw was a picture of cesaro <laughs> with his teeth yeah. gone uh, or his teeth improved in, into this thing and two fairy three yeah, underneath yeah. Massive pop from the crowd that got. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that was really good. Uh, I mean, I mean, they they clearly know how to get the humor going because they've done it on this. They've done it in a fashion files. They did it in. Um, I can't remember the name of the the YouTube show that um, where they they uh, do all the parodies of the old. old oh, uh, Southpaw South Paul Reason Wrestling. Southpaw, yeah. They 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 clearly got the humor down in there. And they clearly know how to get over with the fans. It's just there's nothing really in terms of a storyline that they can mix those guys into. Well, see, they did note. they did have one run with the Usos, and and the crowd was really over trying. Hopefully, 
that the fashion police would actually get the win over the Usos to get the t titles, but of course it didn't happen. Yes, uh, but the but the problem the problem is is that you've got super serious Usos. Yeah. Against a comedy shtick. Also, the match that match really suffered due to the comedy shtick. Yeah. Um, it was because it just it all it all came about that, and the Usos actually I think in the match itself were like you know. What's this? We, yeah. Why are we? Why are we taking this seriously? And yeah. as the so audience, it, again, it, went, it went a little yeah, too far. Actually, why are we talking this seriously? Um, like it could have been nice if they just dropped it and actually let two really, really talented performers perform, and they didn't. Well, this is the thing. Um, I mean, it goes back to NXT again. Like uh, Tyler Breeze was super good in the yeah. ring. I was never a fan of. Uh, his entrance as it was but I mean it fit the persona he, ha he had but it's just it's it's happened with unfortunately a lot of NXT wrestlers that when they've got up to the main stage oh, I'm not yeah. sure if it's if it's the bigger crowd or just coming in and working from the base level again it well, just doesn't seem the, to help the major, hairs, the major hairs that's happened to that is of course Tyler Breeze and I think that the other one is Paulo Cruz yes. uh, and the Ascension that, that's and the ascension, yeah, which, well, which is which is NXT guys who they don't know how to book. Okay, so the ascension, Tyler Breeze, Tyler Breeze, Apollo Cruz. Who else has come up? Uh, they don't know, well, Shinsuke. They don't know how Emma. to book. Emma. <laughs> Emma. Yeah. They've not really. Had to do. All Emma that, wanted to be was was hot was quote unquote hot ass evil Emma. Um, I don't know why she went from this amazing song to this really crappy song right now. Uh, I, uh, I mean, it's something when we talk about Raw, I imagine, and we'll just go off on one uh, about the Raw pay-per-view and everything else. But my God, I don't know what they're doing with Emma over there right now. But it, it's a sign of the times, unfortunately. And I, I've got this really bad feeling that they're going to push Asuka really hard on Raw. And then against everyone else like Nia Jax, it's just going to bomb again. Um, there's only one way they can really take Asuka. And I don't think it's going to go very, down very well in terms of that side. Anyway, um, let's move on to the next match. Uh, it's the WWE Championship match with no, Ginger Mahal versus Ziggler, Ziggler and Rude first, my Ginger. friend. Before no. we get to that, even though, um, before we get to that, um, can we talk briefly about the KFC advert? Oh, with Kurt Angle. With Kurt Angle. With Kurt Angle. Oh, Kurt oh Angle and, and yeah. Kurt with... Angle and, yeah, um, WWE and, and KFC are very much obviously in bed at the minute because we have these series of with of adverts. Um, I find it I find it was funny actually because uh, you remember why uh, we had Shawn Michaels as the Colonel yeah. at one point. The reason we had Shawn Michaels as the Colonel was because Ric Flair being ill. Um, we would have had mm. Ric Flair as the Colonel, which yeah. I would like to see. Um, in this advert, uh, we had Kurt Angle introducing stuff because uh, the, the it, it was, was like a uh, character in yeah. WWE 2017 for reasons i don't know kfc is also an achievement in the game as his snickers as his snickers because um, just note to me editing just have it rain money at this point <laughs> um but uh, as a side angle, note kfc and, they're, they're, and they're, they're snickers the, if you want to sponsor this We'll take your money and your food. Absolutely. Well, those two will. I won't. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, yeah, sure. How about you sponsor <laughs> us with money and then I'll just go, it's a fantastic branding idea. <laughs> uh, but what we had instead was um, of all the people who came out as the Colonel after Kurt Angle mm -hmm. introduced the Colonel, um, we had Kurt Angle uh, as the Colonel. So Kurt Which Angle is... and Kurt Angle and Kurt Angle. Uh, and I can no, confirm no, no. to you all that mm. Kurt Angle, number one and number two, neither of them can act to save their life. Which is really... Uh, I know what you're going to say, John. It was... Um, uh, I forget his name as well. Uh, who was playing the popper's chicken. chicken. Yeah. Uh, it was um, Heath Slayer. Heath Slayer, thank you. Um, I think Heath Slayer did do better. It's just weird that you say Kurt Angle can't act because it's because we've seen him do comedy stylings before. <laughs> But he's if he's if he's reading a script, he's so wooden. Yeah. I mean, 
don't well, let have you seen his movies? near him. He'll catch light. It's. It's so, Mate, it's so pro wrestlers versus that. zombies was the worst thing ever. But, but besides, the, <laughs> like oh, yeah, he's KFC done more than just that, him. and yes, his acting is just as bad in other uh, movies he's, uh, he's done as well. And I've seen some scenes. Of- I mean, this is the problem. Predicament. I mean, this is one of the things that has been become really terrible with the way that WWE has become in general in the last 10, 15 years. Is the the larger writers means that. Uh, people can't be themselves and I mean it was the blessing and the curse of uh, Raw Talk and um, Talking Smack where they could do their own promos but because they were able to do things they weren't staying in character for such things but they were being better and they were being like doing so much more for their character by doing these things and again the blessing because they could do that curse because it was better than what they were being given by the writers and the writers didn't like that no vince didn't like that well vince didn't like it and the writers didn't, didn't like, like it the writers... it wasn't his mm. so, so it had but to that i mean away. you could probably say that that's the same problem with why nxt isn't getting respected it's not mm. his even though it he owns it he didn't create any of it uh... but anyway uh Look, you said that the next match was a championship match. Was yes, it was. Ziggler and Rude after that, no. really? Yeah, uh, yeah. Ziggler and Rude was the uh, the 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 filler uh, before the main event. Cool. Well, before we go into that, uh, I have a little tip here that Jinder Mahal has now held the WWE title longer than Roman Reigns, Ric Flair, and Chris Jericho. Yeah. How bad is that? They, apparently, he's like under a hundred days away from like. Either Undertaker's longest reign or Undertaker's combined. Yeah, it's, so um... Why is this happening? Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I can uh, I can also say that uh, this match, the the build up, I was absolutely appalled by it. There I mean, were Grant... certain remarks that were made on SmackDown that I think yeah. were taken a bit too far. Yes. Yes. Um, I love Shinsuke now. An awesome character. He's probably the most charismatic character that, that they have on the main roster right now, and mm-hmm. they can't jack with him. And they have him with this feud with Jinder Mahal, where Jinder Mahal is making fun of the foreigner. And that really gets at me because we have seen it goddamn too many times, and it shouldn't have been the the build up for this thing it should have been shinsuke nakamura is a threat ginger mahal needs to have the Singh brothers uh, there as much as possible to make sure he doesn't lose the title and chaos ensue that would have been a much better way of doing building this up but nope they had to go with ginger mahal trying to be funny i I imagine the only reason that this wasn't a Hell in a Cell match specifically is because uh, of all the gimmick matches that Jinder's been in recently, and he doesn't yeah. need to be in another. I think that's no, the only reason I, that well, I, I would, Hell in a Cell match recently, recently. Yeah. would just not work. So. I, w- I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't thinking that this match was Hell in a Cell worthy, because granted, uh, for this, year, this year's Hell in a Cell, it was only two Hell in a Cell matches. Mm-hmm. Most, ma- most Hell in a Cell pay-per-views have been three. Mm-hmm. If not pushing it to four, and it would be overblown. So I'm good that it was mm-hmm. only just the two this year, and I didn't really think that this match needed to be in the cell, but I just wanted the build to be more, uh, kind of like, like uh, more intense for the ch- for the champion because this this is the champion going into this match, and it didn't really have it for some time either. Because Shinsuke Nakamura has beaten John Cena, Randy Orton, four number one contendership title matches Mm -hmm. against Jinder. And yet, Jinder Mahal couldn't see that as a threat for some reason. He just wanted, especially for this build up for Hell in a Cell, he just saw him as a joke. I think the the big problem problem with how Jinder's title run has gone in and stayed it is that Jinder's essentially left done the massive body work, come back, been respected for it. They wanted to put him in as the champion, mostly because they wanted to break through into India for it. Everybody knows that, and as such, he's not respected as the champion for who he is, especially as he was, what, the the 50th 
WWE champion, yes. I believe. So he was a landmark champion who was given it pretty much as a promotion, essentially, and has kept it via numerous challenges who should have been a massive threat, as you've said, John. Hasn't respected that threat for what it is. And I don't think the fans are behind Jinder for that whole reason. Like, it, it, I think to a lot of the fans, it feels like Jinder hasn't earned the belt. He's got the oh, look yeah. of the champion. He's getting better on the mic. His ring work's not brilliant, unfortunately. He, I think he has the marks to be a great champion. Um, Which is evident I, by the match that I have the notes here. Yeah, no, absolutely. He has the chances. He has the makings to be a champion, but I think he should have been a one and done, maybe to somebody else like they did with Bray. Like, give the title to him, see how he does. If it's not gone over that well, take it off him, let him chase the title. In that time, people generally get better when they're chasing a title as a, as a, like a, a mega heel um, for what Jinder's trying to be, rather than keeping the belt and doing dastardly ways to stay out of it. It's easier to see a mega heels do dastardly ways to get in rather than like out, as it were. Also, they didn't really do anything significant in the build up to him winning the title there wasn't no. enough build to signify that this man is a threat they did not do enough to take away from the fact that hey previously this guy's like one bugger all um and prove it is a threat even whilst they've sort of trying to make the is it the colas colas yeah. yeah the colas um he's finished to make his finisher look strong still not really managed to do that even by you know knocking off the big names of it and you know there's not been a hint of a kick out even even half a kick out you know after the after the pin or what have you they're trying to make the class this big match ender yeah this big power match ender and mm. it's like oh devastating and oh it's not um <laughs> it's the, the, yeah, they, they didn't do enough in establishing you know why gender is this threat apart from whoa, power and muscle look look at uh, they're, they're literally the entire builders look at him yeah well yes, I'll, look I'll, at then yes <laughs> then look at him in the ring doesn't I mean, translate I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sure the commentators uh on house shows have specifically said he's got the build of a champion yeah. um and the look of a champion it's just how ha they're having the style of a champion what do you want to say, John? The only thing that I really like about Jinder Hall in terms of his presentation is actually his, his entrance, which I yes. really yeah, I, like. I like it. I like it. That, like, yeah, because like you got the, the burning of the fire yeah. revealing stuff as you. That, that's yeah. really cool. Feat. That's really cool. But I, everything else that comes with it. I will tell you this much tonight. Uh, I think he was uh, wanting to be, uh, you know, part of the. Oh, what was that TV show back in the day when it's like stars and stars in their eyes? Mm -hmm. It's like it's like tonight, Matthew. I'm going to be Blue Tista with yeah. his jocks that night. My God, he was is like the blue does not work for his character. <laughs> it's like I, um, I've I've just turned over to my notes for this, for this match, and my first note is um, my first note is well, actually, my first note is actually about Shinsuke's entrance. Because because it's a longer rat, it's a longer trip now. His yeah. music doesn't match up with his. No, yeah, yeah that's it, kind so of. So when 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 the and he's supposed to do the layback, we used to do an NXT. And he doesn't do that anymore because it, the timings never match, and they need to change that somehow. <laughs> but my first note here for the actual match is 139 days. How the actual fuck? <laughs> <laughs> because they split it. He's been champion for 139 mm -hmm. days, and I legitimately just look oh. at the calendar like. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been it's been over three How months. How have we suffered won this it. long? I know it's ridiculous. Um, I think it's because no one's really paying attention to the the championship, uh, the WWE championship scene right now. Which um, is a shame because that's your main title. It for should your brand. be. Yes, I mean it's it should be the main title overall. Um, but I think the problem is is because Jinder doesn't like the belt isn't carried by it, it's it's feasibly uh, a paper champion until he manages to have 
single matches with no interference and starts getting proper clean wins. I don't think anybody's going to respect Jinder. Yeah. That's the thing. And I think the only way he's going to do that is, as I said, by chasing the title. That's, I mean, there was there was some interesting moments. Was there anything in your notes, John, that, that was really... Um, I really liked uh, Shinsuke Nakamura's actual performance, actually. Uh, the knee strikes that he had on Jinder were absolutely beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was really into it, like, all, all, not to the level of what he has done in New Japan. Trust me, we will never see that unless it's really gonna be with someone that he can trust to really deliver those strikes uh, and go full on uh, strong style. But uh, but on that match, he was actually doing well with knee strikes and uh, punches and whatnot, and and. Uh, I don't think he really did much in the way of throws, though. But uh, uh, but no, overall, performance was actually good. Pete, was there anything that really stood out for you in that match? I think John's pretty much hit hit it on his head. Um, I think if this was all mostly about uh, Shinsuke letting out like the the verbal misgivings uh in the recent house shows on SmackDown, and it was mostly about making Shinsuke look good. And you know, pushing Jin, pushing Jinder to the limit, as it were, to but, show that uh, Shinsuke could fight him off. Yeah, but of course, uh, it would just uh, eventually just lead to uh, that off. Uh, you know, the Singh brothers fearing yeah, numbers game again, and uh, the the very belated long ejection from the referee. Oh, I did like uh, I did like how they were ejected. Tried to run back in to cause interference, and the ref was like, "Get, get the fuck out!" Well, that, <laughs> that was actually that's actually the problem. Well, there was actually a slight problem with that, um, because as a result, the biggest pop of the match went to Charles Robinson. Robinson <laughs> and Charles Robinson as the referee should not be getting the biggest pop in your match. But it's little Nate. <laughs> Lil I know Nage, it's little yeah. Nate. I love little Nate. Good luck to him. He's like 16 years in the company now, or whatever it is. Well, um, yeah, he's been there since the invasion. So yeah, he's, yeah. he's, he's one of the, the cults that like Kyoto's like 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 20 years on everybody. Oh he's yeah, like stupid. He's like one of the most senior. He's like the most senior. Su- super ever senior. Had, ever had. <laughs> he, yeah. He's like he's about 15 years on whatever it was that uh, the Hetners had as well. So. Um, Always like to see Kyoto, um, and always like to see Robertson, but he shouldn't get the the biggest pop. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, no, no, please don't. It's like, I mean, I think that's just down to how lively the crowd was. Mm-hmm. You can always tell when it's going to be a lively crowd when uh, they do the the one full chant back out because they've been trying to get back in. They've been trying to pull this in from the indie scene quite a lot recently. Yeah. Uh, of, of getting the crowd more involved in doing the chant because it always goes over in indie crowds where they're smaller and everything else. And... Well, apparently, apparently uh, what was it? I've seen on Twitter. I don't know who who I follow who's been actually very vocally annoyed by that. It's not me, is it? Uh, is, <laughs> no. <laughs> is it you? Um, Are you annoyed I, by the the one fall chant? I actually I, that does annoy me. But only ah. because it's so transparently WWE stealing something. Oh yeah, it's it's better than like, it's better is, than uh, the ch- uh, stuff, it's like. better than the ch- the crowd going this is awesome when the match isn't even two minutes in. Or you uh, still got it to yeah, I, uh, people who are or still you deserve it. You've you've, sh- you've you've stepped in the ring. You've still <laughs> got it. <laughs> yeah. So you have legs. <laughs> I so, it's... well, it's not as pretentious and as stupid as those chants, but oh. you know, because because I love the one uh, one fall chant because it's it, it, you, I, you I just need to you need to it's like it's like we it. we are Vince McMahon filling up the dead air like yeah. uh, where he didn't like the dead air uh, in Seth Rollins' uh, entrance music, so he wanted to <laughs> fill in that. So <gasps> we're just <laughs> so we're just basically filling up that that brief pause period that uh, Chibble has and just throw it in there, you know. He's got a, he's got uh, a t-shirt out of it. Um, again, I, I don't mind it. It does show how lively a crowd is these days. It, and you can it, just, you can, you can judge it on the house shows as well. Uh, if they're not 
that loud when they do it, you generally find the house, the crowd is going to be pretty dead for the show yeah. itself. Also, you were talking about dead. You were talking about dead air. I lost that dead air was because they muted the crowd because they were booing Roman Reigns. <laughs> as as we lose Kev's audio as he says, dead air. <laughs> really? It won't wait, be it, like that on the video, that, but that, for that, us, that, it was that, like the irony was what I said there was the reason we had dead air was because they muted the crowd because they were booing Roman Reigns. Now, yeah. does dub does is Vince in control of Discord? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so. Is Kevin Dunn <laughs> editing this video? Oh <laughs> uh, well, we need we need to talk talk about uh, uh, later on. Uh, it, well, actually, in the last match. Uh, uh, speaking we'll of things you can't edit, though. Uh, uh, God bless Reigns with uh, not Reigns uh, Graves. We've got Reigns on the brain. God, Vince's <laughs> things working. <laughs> God bless Graves for covering from that for that really botched roll up. <laughs> <laughs> that happened yeah. midway through that. That was just ugly. And Graves covered for it like an absolute champ. I mean, Graves is, quite frankly, one of the best commentators in the business right absolutely. now. Absolutely. He's, 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 he's. And he's doing double duty as well. It's, triple, it's amazing. Duty. Duty. Yeah, he's doing all the things at the moment. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, was that all your notes? No, uh, one, one other. Uh, thing I really liked and uh, it was from Jinder uh, when there was a, like a bit of a like a, I can't remember what, what movie he was doing it was a hold or some sort of sleeper or something so something that was that had Shinsuke locked up and Shinsuke went for the ropes and Jinder used his size and used his reach and with his right leg lent Span. out and basically oh, stepped yeah, off the ropes. the middle yeah. rope and like, yeah, and then like no, I remember that, pushed yeah. them back into the center of the ring, and it was such a a great little piece of ring awareness and uh, and and working into his strengths um, that it, it just it stood out really well. The uh, the other thing was uh, we went from the biggest pop from from Charles Robertson to the actual pinfall, um, mm -hmm. and you said about how hot you know how into it the crowd was. They were into it right up to the pinfall. Mm. Uh, because we, it was the, the crowd literally, <laughs> the crowd literally went one, two, three. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you could hear it. Yeah, the, 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 the absolute this collective. Dire. This collective oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> wait, this this like yeah, and actually, it's like oh god, we've still got to live with this. Yeah. I mean, again. I mean, again. This is going to go into where do they go next? Do they keep Shinsuke charging for it? I don't think they can. Uh, I think they've really burnt themselves on this current storyline, and I don't think they can effectively have Shinsuke. Maybe again, this is why they had the talk. Uh, AJ Styles directed the way he wanted to on Talking Smack, and we might see AJ go for it. I think it's about time they take the belt off Jinder. Um, not so much that he'll beat undertaker's title or whatever well more to they've... the point that they go for a champion that you know will push smackdown to be what it was again well the problem just now is that uh what was it they're keeping the title on gender because they're putting him onto the tour in uh india, india yeah uh, in dubai as well so it's uh how long is the tour uh, i think it's like a week two weeks <laughs> yeah i mean this uh, is the thing basically the like... rest of the year <laughs> This yeah, is the so... thing on on Twitter the night of Hell in the Cell uh, Sunday, uh, Lewis at, at Sonic Yoda turned around and like tweeted this was like yeah because he, he was making fun of the whole promotional tweet about making somebody like they stretch the image and I was just like cool so that means that Jinder's still keeping the belt after Hell in the Cell tonight then and he went oh yeah a so lot of people like, were like that when they saw that tweet yeah I it's like thanks for. Spoiling your, your your main event pay per view. Social media, Thanks. everybody, it ruins pay per views. Thanks, WWE. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, I I also also want to note note that 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 match was actually shorter than prior. It's like it was, a, it, it did feel like a very short match. Yeah, like it was like uh, the women's match was twelve fifteen, the WWE Championship twelve ten, and I was like, wow. 
very short. To be fair, though, it felt as long as it needed to be. Um, I think if that match was going to go on any longer, then uh, it would have bored the piss out of everybody, uh, to be completely frank, more so than it already did. Um, I, I've got no, I've got no problems with it. It was a serviceable match, again. Um, it just depends where they go from here. I don't really need to see Jinder Shinsuke 3, uh, unless unless... Unless they're going to stick Jinder in a, a multi-man title defense, then yeah, I'll see Shinsuke and I'll see AJ Styles and I'll see whoever. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, after that, um, we had KO with awesome. Uh, yeah, with match. promo of the night, actually. Yeah, that was. Um, I really liked how uh, Kevin Owens actually called out all the commentators for what they yep. normally say about Hell in a Cell. I actually laughed. And I, I, that's why I love Kevin Owens. That's why I've loved Kevin since day one. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he is the man in talk. Even though he doesn't talk straight like every other person tends to do on their mm-hmm. promises, like they just read the line and just talk it straight. Kevin Owens has the ability to kind of like... He- fluctuate takes, his kind of like takes, voice he takes bullet points yeah like he's one of the people that goes so i need like kevin owen strikes me as the guy who gets given a script and he goes what are the main points of this and then he'll get bullet points and as long as he hits those bullet points he'll do whatever he wants yeah and like, uh he actually talks real as well because he is a family man he mm-hmm. is doing this for his family he's doing this on all that and everything of that is true but yet He's such an evil bastard at times. Like how how he wants to, you know, do this Kev- to this person and whatnot. Especially to Shane. Kevin we'll get into. Kevin Owens strikes me the same as the Miz does, where he will always be the perennial heel. We will never, like, we'll never see the Miz have another face turn. We oh, won't ever. No. We won't ever see Kevin Owens have a face run. He'll be closer to possibly a tweener. That yeah. will probably that we've been seeing coming out of these things more recently, where he'll be because he, he essentially is the perennial tweener. He's so over with the fans, but he's a dastardly heel. Like essentially, that's what he is. Like he, we're not we're not talking Roman Reigns level of tweener or John Cena level of tweener, where they don't care what the crowd says and they have the crowd going fifty fifty. We're talking what the character is. It's like it's a, essentially, if we follow what the crowd is, Roman Reigns is a heel. It's interesting that you mention the Miz because I agree in that they are the the heels, but they're not. They are sort of going to be like forever heels. But the reason why is you hate them because they're right. Mm. That's 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 the, you don't hate them because they're despicable. Although they are despicable, you hate them because they at, they're actually right. There's, and they have a the, point. The, the best yeah. he, the best heels are the heels who believe that they're right for the Miz and for uh and for KO they don't just believe they're right they are right a lot of the time and that's what you dislike about them is that they've made their point and you know what it sticks in your craw because you know what they've actually got a point about that yeah I I also loved uh yeah I also loved uh, a video package and Kevin Owens shared this on his Twitter uh, of uh, WWE Media putting up a video of him the day off uh, Hell in a Cell prior and hi- him just talking about it. And then he talks about, it's like teaching my kids a, uh, a lesson. It's like you need to fight off your bullies and whatnot, and this is how you do it. And, whatnot. and he's making it sound like that, yeah, he is right on doing that. And it's awesome. And. You know, it's like we don't have that many kind of like heels that are like that, other than himself and Miz. So, yeah, um, you, you can't. Yeah, fall. no, I think you hit all the points there really about why they are so good at their job. It's it's just doing like, and it's why the Cena Reigns promos kind of worked recently because they were more heelish in nature because they were just taking all the smarky comments that people say about them and just putting them in a like a promo. But the the big difference is, and you see it a lot more when Miz is allowed off the chain, is that they're very... They get very real with their promos and they just put it down to brass tacks. And I think 
like you said, Kev, that's why they get over so well because they just place it down and just lay it down the way they do. But it was a very good promo. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Going into uh, another piss break match, essentially. <laughs> yeah, uh, Bobby Roode. Uh, well, well, it was like, uh, or Bobby Roode. It was a yeah. it was a it was a match where everybody <laughs> knew what was going to happen yeah. because Ver- versus Dolph Ziggler. I mean, granted, uh, what was it? The I knew I knew for a fact how Ziggler was going to come in the match or like you know come down. I ramp. was I was hoping for um, what was similar to the old. I think it was the WrestleMania two entrances where they came down on the mini rings. Uh, oh, you, you, were, you were being way too ambitious because <laughs> yeah. after, no, no, after, after everything that Dolph was doing on the lead up to this yeah. uh, match, I knew that it was going to be something. I It was either going to be one of two things. Either he comes out normally or he comes out to silence. So it was the um, latter. I, I, <laughs> love, some... I love that you went, you went, I was hoping for WrestleMania 3. I was like, I was hoping WrestleMania three. I got a recycled R Truth entrance. That's <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's what you. Got. Um, but I think somebody on Twitter, I can't remember who it was, uh, when that entrance happened, was like, um, Dolph Ziggler's entrance is how everybody feels after the Jinder Shinsuke match. Just oh, blank, yeah. blank Dead. silence. <laughs> yeah. It was like we had a um, record scratch because. Oh yeah! I, oh, that, that was, was so like, bad. That, that was so I just, bad. I just that, that was just like the that was the height of cheese. Yeah. Again, that's probably Vince. Yeah, we got record scratch. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, I like uh, people use those CDs, right? Uh, they scratch on it. Let's scratch that CD. Uh, I yeah, saw you in a Batman movie. Or are you still on those fancy new mini discs? <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the big problem with this match like the the story going into it has felt rushed because Rude's only come into it in I believe one two one two house shows going rah I'll show you what this is really like but the fact is is that we know that this has been built up to be a Rude win from the start yeah Ziggler, Ziggler wants out of his contract and oh, yeah. he's staying around to help build uh, the younger generation up and it, it, essentially we knew that they wanted to build Root up to be I think they're trying to build Root up to be a main star contender quickly and to beat somebody that's been bragging about their in-ring skills for four to five weeks on house shows is I mean it's it's annoying because Ziggler has literally like I think they even mentioned it in the commentary that a year previous Ziggler was fighting for his job essentially versus The Miz in what was again a match of the night on that card and then yeah. he's into what he is and he's just not happy and he wants to leave so i missed that I, mean, was, I missed that he wanted out of his contract actually that's that's new. yeah uh, i mean he's wanted out of his contract for a while but they've convinced him to hang around and just like finish off the contract by helping like some of the newer stars that have come up from NXT and they're doing, like, a, fantastic, they're doing a fantastic job of a convincing him to stay <laughs> And B, making him enjoy that period of time while he's working. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fantastic definitely. Time, fantastic chance of that. Oh. Um, but in the match itself, uh, I mean, granted, there wasn't really much to it, though. That was the problem. Um, Again, as I said, it felt like a piss break match, uh, yeah. especially with what we know we were leading into. <laughs> also, um, also, I put this uh, I put this other note. Dolph Ziggler's ponytail. What the hell? I thought his hair was looking marvelous that evening. <laughs> I don't know about that ponytail, though. Um, um, it was a serviceable match, but just like some of the other matches on the card that have been in between, it there was just nothing memorable about it. Yeah, the, the, the only memorable things is obviously outside of the match. I've got here, crowd with CM Punk chant. Guys, it's 2017. Come on now. It's getting really ridiculous. Uh, I think I, I, I love protest chant. Yeah, it's it a protest chant, and I'm really getting sick and tired of those. It's a protest chant, and it's something we only really hear with the, as I said, the vocal crowds. And it was when, when it, com- when it comes to the, when the, a match is boring, uh, yeah. and it was getting boring at that point because there was CM a lot of rest boring. holds in that. Uh, well, it was like there was a lot of rest holds to that uh, match. Uh, even at one point, obviously Ziggler was shouting, "Ask him," and uh, <laughs> or like or what. Oh, it? you just misheard. He was promoting Oscar. <laughs> what, what, what wasn't this match the one with the sleeper hold that lasted like half the match? Yeah, uh, the, yeah, the 
It was this one, wasn't it? I think it, got down, yeah. it, it was booked really weirdly, I thought, the match. Because yeah. it started off with a whole thing about controlling the head with headlocks. And it was like headlocks into sleeper, and then sleeper into more headlocks. And the, ent- the entire first half of the match was just like, okay, well, who's got control of the head right now? I don't know, but you're basically starting the match off with rest holds and going yeah. in to other rest holds to go back into rest holds. And this is just like, okay, well, how does this benefit? How does yeah. this work into your psychology of the match? It, it's it's trying to have a wrestling, uh, like a wrestling match, when th- at heart they're more. I don't want to say brawlers, but like Ziggler is definitely more of a striker with how he works. He's not. A, he's not a, a grappler. Yeah, he he does because all of his kind of like moves that are are head related, but they're fast pace kind of like yeah. uh, you know kind of like, like his like his like, like the zigzag semi, the zigzag the, the semi sling blade the the famous uh, etc etc it's, cetera, it's, slick, et cetera. it's quick DDT impact yeah it, it, Ziggler Ziggler is a fast paced striker. Not and of course, a, not a grappler, and I didn't yeah. understand the psychology of this well, match. Well, of it's course, ironic because for a time they were trying to promote him as this fantastic. They remember they were doing about whole like the, like the university or the college stuff, and it was like, oh, he's this, this champion of of um, mm. wrestling from so and so and so and so. He's got this high this amateur background. They're really pushing that like it, like six months ago. Um, so that's that's really weird. Uh, you were so going back to that period of time. John, you said about how the ponytail... The ponytail was cheap heat. Uh, what, <laughs> see, see, well, he see, is a heel, see, after see all. He Chris is a Jericho heel. in 1999 for the top knot. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. But the, the thing that was really... Was, during that entire sequence of when he was like on the back, on the mat, Ziegler's face... I don't know what he was doing, but he was just making a really face. He was like... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he's, like, he's like trying to dislocate his own jaw, trying to just just go. He's just going the crowd, just like. Mm. Was it? Was he trying to reenact Mick Foley having I, a tooth up his nose? Wow. I don't. I, I think he was trying. To, I, was like, I think he was trying to just be a snake that was trying to dislocate his own jaw so he could perhaps eat Bobby Roode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he was becoming Freddy Krueger. It is yeah. the season. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know what was up with that. Um, I don't know. I'm very I mean, glad they've redone Rude's Titan Tron when the entrance. Because I, I, yeah. never, I never liked that text, so they've redone that. That's really nice. Yeah, no, the, the text has definitely been better. Uh, they, but... uh, f- Bob, there, there was some miscommunication in that match. Bobby Rude did not take the DDT very the the high DDT in the right no, way at didn't. all didn't. Um, and they completely botched the famous <laughs> entirely it basically became it basically became an elevated shove down the neck bulldog <laughs> yeah was, I think I think that I have that weird. on my notes uh, that was weird and then we moved after what seemed like forever as everyone bought t-shirts and went for a piss as you say um, we went for that roll up sequence at the end uh, otherwise known as I'm winning I'm winning at the moment, so I'm now going to pull the guy up. <laughs> it was like it was like a t- it was a full tumble. It was, yeah, like, but, it, but it, yeah, it, I, the pull of the tights. What was the? Why I'm did you pull the guy? Oh no! I pulled the guy up over him being pinned into. I pinned myself, <laughs> <laughs> and and not oh that's and then it's like oh that looks like fun. I'll do that as well. <laughs> it's yeah. just. Like, Pulling each other over and pulling themselves out of winning situations. So it was, yeah. uh, it was weird. It, sh- it should have uh, been doink and doink bra yeah, in that absolutely. match with that th- with that last segment. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. After, but after that last one, um, it was an immediate, you know, Ziggler just attacking after the match. Yeah. Typical kind of. So like, which means uh, which means that we're we're probably going to see a follow up to that story. Which yeah. Hopefully this ho- must continue. Well. <laughs> Hopefully, with four weeks of actual story and build up, they might be able to make it into something that's a little bit more serviceable next time, and Maybe. like less less of a. I think they knew both going in when they knew they're going to be between the championship match and uh, Hell in a Cell, the, mel- uh, the main I'm the main, main event that they knew they were going to have to just do a quick match, and they want to make something better because they're both really good workers, and we know they can put on a good match. So 
you start at the bottom and look to go forward, I guess. Uh, plus, uh, what was it? Uh, a lot of people, again, this is just people, uh, certain people reaction that uh, having Bobby Roode as a face yeah. in this situation at the moment is that. not helping uh, you know, the character because is basically I am, is arrogance yes. and, he's straight, and he's like you're a face he's like I am this wonderful thing of like, yeah but he's clearly a face to come in because he's got the cheap pop right now uh, it, well, at, at the moment he's got the entrance the yeah. entrance is what's getting him over mostly. Well, he's all, he's also got he's also got every moment in the ring where there's downtime where he can pop the crowd whenever he chooses yeah because it's it's very easy to do so with the way he does it. But yes, it leads us into the main event, which was a hell of a lot longer than everybody thought it was going to be. Oh boy! Um, of, of, for nobody both, for both it was good and worse. Yeah, there, there, there was you know, but I'll definitely say second best second best match. Of, I'll say that much. Yeah, but like, considering, compared, compared considering, to the tag cons- match that was earlier. Considering uh, some of the other matches on the card and how much we've talked about them, it's not hard to see why. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was quite funny when everybody was like, "Well, they've only got ten minutes. How? How? This is going to be a very short hell in cell." And then everybody looked at what time Talking Smack was on, and they were like, "Oh, this actually goes on till half past." And so, yes, uh, we go into Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon in Hell in a Hell and a foul falls you, count anywhere. Yeah, uh, um, yeah, I must admit, I, I having watched this, I'm pretty certain it wasn't hell in a cell. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm actually convinced they just showed some video footage from SmackDown versus Raw from 2007, <laughs> uh, because it was basically a hell in a cell directly from that. <laughs> was... Yes, um, I don't. The stuff inside the cell was good. But the problem being, when you go hell in a cell, four counts anywhere, you immediately know shenanigans are afoot. Like, for whatever reason, you know shenanigans are going to be afoot in a four count anywhere match. Yeah. Whether they go out the back, or whether something happens at ringside, or, you know, they go on a grand tour of the brand new arena, which wouldn't surprise me since they were billing it all night as the brand new arena. I was like, oh, really? Okay, here we go. Grand tour, shall we? Um, it was good. Um, Shane still can't throw punches, but he he, he made knows. he he likes to... his potatoes. Yes, he does like his potatoes. But it did seem like he was trying to less wrestle and make it more MMA based. Yeah, well, that's what most of, that was what the promo had him in yeah. for his training was he was in like an MMA. Uh, well, ev- right. every 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 promo of Shane in a, going into a big match is him doing MMA training. Yeah, that's what he does. Um, it was good. The stuff Shane, well, the, the actual hold Shane was throwing out was good. Kevin is always a very good seller. Yeah, like, um, what he does. I got plenty of notes talking about how awesome Kevin Owens was during the match. Um, here, just just by just a few examples is frog splash uh going on to uh, mm-hmm. shane mcmahon that was awesome and then going for the pop-up bar- power bomb shane countered it with a triangle hold mm-hmm. that was uh, amazing that, that I was really, really, really good, nice that, that, yeah, really good spot that coming. was um the uh power bomb on the steel steps uh um, good like, yep you know, off the other, other triangle choke yep yep um the uh kevin owens kind of like taunting of jane's kids by the way, Shane's kids no. sent for the man <laughs> yeah. because yeah. They, one of them like, were corpsey like heck. Whatever. It's like whatever. I'm on TV. I'm gonna, bu- yeah. I'm gonna murder your dad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like ah 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 ah. That's insert funny. The, insert the Vince McMahon. Dead. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of the one of the funnier moments I I, I remember from the match is when. Uh, Kevin went for the cannonball off the ring apron, landed on the table. That and was then the a bit of table. Then the bit of the table that was going to land, he just flips it off him. He's just like, yes. go away. I also, um, I also, I also loved uh, Sh- uh, Shane taking that half of that the table, table and beating him with it. Beat him up with that it. was really that, good. that was great. I don't know if that table was that 
specifically gimmicked, but that split so perfectly. Oh yeah, it was so perfectly oh, that uh, it was good that he, Shane was it, able yeah, to it, use it, it as a weapon. It really to, benefited. Yeah. It became a yeah. Thing. Um, yeah. But again, this leads to like it's another really good Hell in a Cell match with some really good memorable spots. Um, although when they actually got to the outside, which were those actually, bolt cut, were those bolt cutters there all along? Uh, like, well, yeah, well they were under the ring. Yeah, anything could be under the <laughs> ring. But I was gonna say, uh, it, well, it was good that it was good. That, it was good that Shane Shane McMahon initiated the match first. Yes. Uh, at the start and brawled outside of the out of the cell first and then back in, you know, yeah. it really it really showed the kind of like blood feud uh, the blood feud that uh, Shane had on Evan Owens. Yes. Um, and how much he wanted to you know really teach Kevin Owens a lesson uh, by jumping the gun first. Um, All I'm saying is that if there are bolt cutters under the ring, <laughs> I would not go and open the fucking cell. With a pair of bolt cutters, when I'm playing in Hell in a Cell. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say, I'll say that, uh, yeah, uh, Shane definitely had a nightmare trying to get those that Somewhere, chain cut. Mark Henry was pointing at a TV and going, <laughs> "See, see, I told you, it's not as easy as it looks." No, he was like, one didn't work, two didn't work, yeah. three didn't work. Four, it was like 30 seconds, but it felt like two camera, minutes. Just going, for God's sake, hopefully get through this lock. Yeah. It was more relief. <laughs> it was like, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, um, but yeah, I'm not sure, like, when Kevin was on top of the cell and Shane was, like, on the table, the whole Kevin, I'm not sure if Kevin was meant to do a spot or if it was all meant to be delayed. Oh, before um, we get before if, we get to that bit, um, I yeah. w- want to point out the big botch uh, or, or or the big mistake that was done here. Uh, Shane McMahon does a co- coast to coast inside the ring. Yes, whatnot. he goes for the pin. One, two. Kevin has his foot on the rope. Why the bloody hell is there a rope break in a Hell in a Cell fall count, false count anywhere uh, match? Um, as far as I'm aware, like I know that the commentary actually called it out. Yeah. Uh, it yeah, was Corey Graves the called that out. But to the best of my ability, like as far as I'm aware, it's just a no disqualification match. Like rope breaks. Yeah, so why is there rope different. breaks? Yeah, yeah, but rope rope break is like something completely different in terms of a no it's, disqualification. It's, it's like, weird because it's it's it's, no, it's when it's no dis when it is specifically it's no disqualification. Then the rope breaks. Then then there are no rope breaks. Yeah, but for some reason, like if, when if, it is if, a if... match which is no disqualification, yeah, which is you know, it goes with like a triple threat is no disqualification. But right yeah, but we've seen a thing. It's... We've seen this before in other things where someone gets tied up in a rope, and obviously they'll go at them. They'll have a submission hold, and they'll 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 hit the rope to try and break it. But obviously, there's no rope breaks. I understand that idea in terms of a no disqualification match. In terms of a pinfall, though, it's you know. It, People don't completely understand. Uh, who was the ref for that match? Kyoda. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. But like, yeah. In t- in terms of like, it felt like a, a rope break should be natural. Um, so obviously, the fact that Kevin's done it means that it was a spot, and Kyoda was told to do that. Um, specifically, I, I, just, I just questioned it. That's, that's, yeah. that's ah, every, I think everybody questioned it. Yeah, yeah. But... yeah. Um, but no, back, back, back to the the action on top of the cell. Um, yeah, where... like the the whole stuff when Kevin's up there for the first time. Yeah, and like decided to jump off. It feels like he was going to, but like they changed their mind because it, it's just I, the way it I works. Would, like I would agree on that because I feel felt as though Kevin would have wanted to try to jump off the cell but management was like no we can't let you do that we're gonna let you fall yeah. from half the height but we're half not gonna height, let you yeah. jump we're not gonna let you jump it to, we'll give that we'll give it we'll give it to shane hints. because shane, my, shane he's not a full-time wrestler he could take my, the injury and my only argument was that if he was definitely not gonna jump off the cell then the time it should have taken for shane to get up there should have been at least half of what it was that's true. It was it. There was, was a lot. Very... There was a lot of spots that, or a lot of time 
Because this was like, in total, uh, 39 about, minutes. Yeah, it's about a 40 minute match, yeah. And uh, there was a lot of moments where there was like a lot not happening uh, and waiting on things to happen and yes. most of them being on Shane's part trying to act on either climbing the cell or reacting or getting up from a move or whatever. Um, it, it was just that I don't think the match was too long, but certain parts of the match were longer than they needed to be. Yeah. If you understand what I'm saying, like the, the time for Shane to get up off the table, up the stage while Kevin was still mucking around, that could have been half the time it was. Um, the fight on the side of the cell before Kevin goes through it could have been, you know, a lot faster than it could have been. The amount of time they were on top of the cell, everybody was holding their breath. It was definitely very tense. I was definitely thinking, is someone actually going to go through the cell? But, you know, it obviously it could have been half of the time of what they were up there being. That's my, my only real complaint about the match is certain things felt like they took more time than what they needed to. Mm-hmm. Uh, before we lead up to the end of this, Kevin, do you have mm-hmm. any highlights of your, uh, yourself? Yes. Um, I thought Shane busting out a Senshai kick. Yes. At the beginning was pretty amazing. It was really funny, <laughs> um, yes. that, that was That was a case of like, holy shit, he did that. Um, it was like, it was like you, you see him do stuff, again, it was like you see him do stuff in the build-ups and, and the the promos when they've showed him in MMA situation getting the training. And you mm-hmm. see him do it, but you've never seen him actually bust out something like that in a match. And I legitimately cannot remember a central kick being used um, in a wrestling match before. Of not one that I've seen, anyway. So that... So that I, can't, I can't recall one myself, no, that honestly. Was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. I mean, um, at least not in mainstream wrestling. They might have done no. something in something in oh, yeah, yeah. I, I imagine. I can, ima- I can imagine, well, not to insinuate it's not mainstream, but I imagine it was probably busted out a few times in New Japan uh, and, and the like, and probably somebody does it on the indie circuit. There was really uh, regularity, but never seen it on... on what we would I think it works as a... I think it, I think it works as a we'll see it occasionally type thing. Hmm. That that's pretty good. It's, it's funny with with Shane that in that with all this training and stuff in the real he he can do real punches. And yes. After 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 starting in this world of fantasy and make believe that we have, which is called wrestling, uh, in that he started off with that and he can't do work punches, but he can now do wonderful, you know, pro- proper work. <sighs> And he still can't do the, 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 after he still can't do the work punches. Um, again, what we said about the, the kids just not giving us stuff was was very funny. Uh, up on the cage, um, following through with what I said at the beginning about it being um, basically SmackDown versus Raw Hell in a Cell, mm-hmm. uh, we had the uh, <laughs> we had the uh, the backdrop, which was we. AKA, AKA your Irish whip reversal <laughs> move on top of the thing we had, uh, which I did laugh. I did laugh at. Um, one thing that really stuck out was the slow, slow bowing of that cage. Oh um, yeah, the atmosphere in the arena getting increasingly. Oh god, Worried. please get off of that section. Yeah. Oh god, please get off that section. And there was one moment where I, I, I think it was, I think it was Graves. Um, but one of them on one of them in country, it got sl- got very obviously more frantic because you could see, and every mm-hmm. time there was a big move, it was like oh god. But there I was think like, it, I think it was like the bottom right hand corner of the middle closest to the the hard cam yeah. was the one that was going the most because they were doing that was really dipping by the that end. was the one they did the the uh, set up power bomb into as well, wasn't it in, on that yes. Part? Yes, yeah. uh, but uh, the, the the one that really stood out in my mind and with, with the commentary was when uh, he went for the senton. Yes, and somebody yelled out, "Please no!" <laughs> because, because, and it was very real at that point because it was it was on the Boeing section. It almost it almost the full weight of Kevin Owens was going to drop on it. It and... almost felt like the commentators knew the end. The commentators knew the beginning, but they didn't know everything and how long they were going to be at the top. 
and obviously like you're saying and we've all we all noticed about the Boeing how everybody you know I mentioned about everybody holding their breath while they were on top of it mm. there was a very real fear that somebody was going to go through the top which is what it felt like it felt like that Were was going like to be a massive me spot. And actually looking at the cage. I mean, yes. That's every how every it was time. put together yeah. at the top there. And going, and you look, you say, have they restrained, have they like reinforced Because I was looking at that and that there was, was a, getting me there more was, because it There was a couple of times, wrong. there was a couple of times it looked like it was super reinforced in corners because it actually felt like along the, the edge that it had, at the chain link had actually separated off the actual like mm. the actual join in the middle there was it, it felt you look at, you looked at it first of all and you thought okay it was it almost looked like there was like a, a layer underneath the top layer mm. and then you looked again and actually no so the thing is the thing is is that when they increased the height of that cage you know that nobody's going to go through that thing. Yeah. That is, it's, that's it's, a, it's also you see it with the beams as well. Yeah, they're much thicker than UV situations of the cell. But, uh, but so Graves actually also played into this whole sort of anxiety thing because he mentioned about he mentioned the word fatal about four times, which mm. I which for WWE uh, <laughs> is probably not the best thing you should do. No. But, no. Especially yes. at what was it over there, like four o'clock in the afternoon? I think it was. Uh no, I think it would have been coming close no, it, to seven. It, quite oh, late. it would have been even later than that. But but yeah, you know, people it's like people potentially from falling from a great height and mentioning the word fatal is probably not. Well, especially if someone of Shane's age as well. Like he's very spry for the age he is, but someone of Shane's uh, age, like going to fall through that thing at that height, is very scary thought at least. But they did not, of course. Um, and thank God, Owens went. Yes, very much so. Well done, the engineers. Hmm. Um, o- Owens made to throw Shane off, and Shane basically put uh, put that the brakes really on. Good. Did, a, yeah. a, did like insecurity type kick thing, wasn't it? Yeah, he did. He did he, we did like a sort of a baseball slide, prevent him downwards to prevent himself on, and then did yeah, yeah did. It, it did so. It, it was very clear desperation stakes move there. That was pretty good. Yeah. And then we sort of moved into essentially the final sequence. So. Mm-hmm. Um, it was pretty good. Um, both tables essentially been going through. Um, the the end of the match was really really good. I definitely wasn't expecting it, uh, although I was expecting the interference from one Mister Sami Zayn. But I do want to comment on when Shane actually landed through the table and him actually bouncing when he landed was... One thing I noticed between wow. this... With, with this fall and the fall he did at uh, WrestleMania, WrestleMania. Against, yep. uh, Undertaker, with the one in the Undertaker one, you de- definitely noticed the padding underneath the table because you saw all that padding burst out when yeah. Shane hit that table. This time around, where was it? No, no idea. idea. What the heck? He, bounced, like, he, like, he, ba- he literally bounced on that table. I don't know what that table is made of, but that thing, that landing, would have bloody hurt. I suspect, uh, they, I suspect it sort of would rubber. It, um, more than it, ha- it would have to be. Because it would have to be. It, because... it looked different. The table makeup looked different, especially when you saw the, the, the Kev- one Kevin Owens went through, actually. It looked different on the makeup. So, but, yeah. Yeah. Without... Without uh, any of the the padding on the bags this time. Firstly, Shane McMahon, you're fucking crazy. Well, he's what is he? Sixty two? No, he's like. He's, he's, or is he uh, the younger than that? He's, he's not. He's not. Like, he's not older than the Undertaker. Uh, well, uh, he's close to the age of the Undertaker. No, he's close, but he's definitely not oh, older. He's 47. Than... So, but, there we go. Oh, he's forty. Well, oh, geez, forty seven. Yeah, forty seven. He shouldn't be doing that. Not at forty seven. Oh, at Taker's fifty-two. There we go. No, fifty. Aye, Taker. Um, so, put, so uh, he's got no excuse but to come back and chuck himself off the cell to Tombstone somebody. <laughs> <laughs> tombstone Coming through the soon. cell. <laughs> Doesn't matter because the Undertaker will never die. So, uh, uh, but yeah, no, he's a dead man. 
<laughs> but yeah, I think we we should move on to the the twist. Although it wasn't pulled off, uh, it wasn't executed very well. No, of um, uh, Sam whenever, Zane because everyone was fo- obviously because everyone was focused on Shane and how yeah. he was kind of like falling down. We didn't see what happened down below. We just thought that Kevin Owens just moved on his own power. Until which, you saw the replay. Which technically he did, because when they kept on showing that replay... You could Kevin see that was Kevin like, was moving, yeah, yeah. first, and then Sammy was there getting it. And I don't know how long Sammy was there for. Um, but, so, uh, essentially, about... about I think it was about 15 seconds uh, before Shane jumped, there's actual footage from like the rafters of Sammy moving into position with the hood on. Yeah, and then just slowly t- and then taking it off like just when Shane's about like about five seconds before Shane's about to jump. Yeah, and then like pulling, pulling, <laughs> yeah, pulling uh, Kev out the way. Uh, they've obviously showed it to so many times that is it's like the whole Enzo Amore snap nearly snapping his neck on that bloody rope situation. They've shown yeah. that so many times. Um, the biggest thing I want to argue about this is that it's Sa- everybody's calling it Sammy's heel turn. Um, and everybody's saying that Sammy had this look on his face that was like showed that he'd snapped or like his mind was going through. It really didn't, didn't look like that at all. It looked no. like he was saving a friend more than a heel turn. It was a very conflicted Sammy. Zane. Yes, it was a very conflicted look. It was just like, especially when he made the choice of like to push like, or the MTs out of the way to put Kevin on top so Kevin could get the pimple. That was the heelish move. Yeah, like pulling Kev uh, out the way was more of a I'm gonna save my best friend thing. Yeah, like, even like, though we've like... we've had our rivalries and problems and whatnot, we still grew up on we still still grew up in this industry together. Exactly, uh, and you know, like, as friends. Like we've, like we've mentioned earlier, with certain big heels in uh, NXT and that being faces currently, it's essentially Sami the... Zayn is not gonna work as a heel. I don't think. Well, no. it's 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 essentially the motto: keep your enemies close, uh, keep your friends close, and your enemies closer. Yeah. Uh, motto here with Sami Zayn and him, Kevin Kevin Owens. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's what we're kind of supposed to kind of like take out of this. I mean, but, a lot of people, a lot of people are like either torn between a heel turn because apparently Kevin Owens is meant to be going back to Raw. I haven't seen Raw this week yet. Uh, um, because he's been advertised for a couple of Raw shows. But a couple of people have been saying, oh, it's Kevin Steen and El Generico again. We get to see this. So, and who? I'm like, yeah, well, well, yeah, a lot of people on the way of uh, Kevin Owens in these stuff won't understand. But um, No, no, no. I meant like for El- the El Gen- but, oh, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> uh, but um, Hey, yeah, I, got the, I have the DVD. I have the Kevin Owens story. Um I know he like plays shit. Kevin Owens. <laughs> yeah. um, it's it's going to be weird to see how they take this story, and I'm sure we'll see after SmackDown where this goes. Yeah. It's, it's going to be the big story leading into it, so we'll we'll see what happens. No doubt. I thought I thought it was interesting that I mean, the initial because the initial thing is oh God, yes he's he's done the jump, but it's funny that it it turns it turned away from the. Shane McMahon falls off things 2017 edition uh, to to why Sammy why but and it, it takes a lot to you know at least partly upstage somebody jumping off a cage just by I mean it was a good match overall to upstage the entire match with just yeah. that is uh, a feat on itself it's, it's, imp- I don't... it's impressive and it's, the only reason that that happened was because for the entirety of his run and a lot of people have always sort of thought that okay sammy is this character you know it's very difficult to paint a guy who does you know is the is the type of guy he is and hey he does all this charity stuff at his own time that you know to help people the in. perennial face yeah he he is he is a lot of people were saying how he would be this sort of generations maybe like generation steamboat character in this perennial yeah go- because can't, it's very difficult to dislike Sami Zayn as, as a. It's very very hard. Person. As a character, I reckon he could actually still say face after all this, simply because he could very well justify his position. Him putting uh, Owens on top of Shane was he could easily say was more of a case of just making sure the match was ended so that nobody, yes. nothing would be hurt anymore. Uh, he didn't want his friend didn't as he's saying didn't want his friend hurt. Um, his friend or his friend boss, still, yeah, whatever, whatever. Um, 
But then the argument against that is the EMTs would have just ended the match anyway. They've done it before where competitor X is no longer to, able to continue and yeah. the match has been but, awarded. But then, but, but then he could still save it because he was trying to stop... When we had it with the promo, he was trying to stop Kevin Owens from doing something that he would... Yeah. Regret. I, I think... I. I think the way this is going to get played out is very much like uh, Sammy's going to be very much in the middle mm. uh, until something happens to continue Kevin Owens versus whatever. Uh, mm. A big thing coming up for this is that Shane's meant to be off TV for a while and Triple H is going to replace him. We're going to see the WrestleMania match of Kevin Owens versus Triple H, which will be an interesting match. I'd like to see it. Yeah, it'd be yeah, interesting. interesting yeah. It's one of those... It's just, it's just, just weird how that's all come about um the only the other thing actually that this whole situation affects is ironically the stuff in the pre-show uh because we were saying about what's going to happen with the hype bros and whether or not they think they're going to be a heel turn the answer is no not yet definitely because mm. we're not gonna they're not gonna have like two two question mark heel turns on the same smackdown so well potentially gonna three give a bit of a yeah. guess. Uh, before that, that's before that's dealt with because we've got to deal with the Sami Zayn stuff and yeah. Kevin Owens stuff first. Um, well, that 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 is obviously after this main event or not. That is the talking point going into this tonight's uh, SmackDown. Smackdown. Yeah. So uh, um, that will be probably addressed right at the start of the but, start of the show. Yeah. So, but, but yeah. otherwise enjoyable match. Um, I, have I thought it was about, a very enjoyable match. Um, it was dead. things about it with the. I, I am conflicted myself whether or not it actually damages. It's actually damaged Hell in a Cell itself as a concept. I, well, um, the the problem is is that the minute they started doing pay per views with the names around particular matches and throwing more of that one match type from a very rare occasional match yeah. into two three four in one night it became overdrawn yep. like hell in a cell 10 15 years ago was that occasional rare match that they would do as like the big blowout which we saw in like 2000 with armageddon hell in a cell to like the feud ender like we saw with triple h and cactus jack it's it's like it used to be that once a year thing and now essentially you know, with the amount of gimmick matches they have, it draws out and we see things that are similar, like the Punjabi prison or Elimination Chamber. And when you get two Elimination Chambers in a night, when you get a Punjabi prison match, like once every God knows how often, but you get cage matches thrown in and two, hell, two three Hell in a Cells. <laughs> no, I know, right? Uh, two, three Hell in a Cell matches. It just wears thin on the whole concept of what the match should be. Um, but unfortunately, that's what happens when you have two brands and you need to do several match types to encourage. Like, I, I was utterly surprised that the Money in the Bank wasn't a, a cross promotional thing, at a, like a, a SummerSlam or something else, so that each brand could have one. And instead, they went for the men's and the women's, which is a good idea in concept, but they blew it. And the big question is how many TLC matches are we going to get in two weeks' time? That is a like, good question. Uh, well, we're definitely not going to have a tag match because Jeff's out with an injury, but like that's a story for another time, and I'm sure we'll have that conversation. Uh, as of such, we've been going for about two and a half hours, so um, I think just as, lo just as long as a pay per view, so yeah, okay. it's pretty okay. much okay. Well, okay, okay. Let's, 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 let's boil this let's down. Let's go home, mark, there. Out, mark out of 10 for this pay per view, starting with you, John. Um, I would have to give this a very con contable 7.5, uh, I'd say. Yeah, I'm going to be the awkward one here. Um, definitely the, the highlights were the two cell matches, of course. Uh, the triple threat was good. Um, but uh, the problem with uh, women's match, the um, Rusev, Randy Orton... Uh, and Bobby Roode, D Dolph Ziggler, uh, it wasn't that strong from those matches to kind of like make it any higher. So, yeah, 7.5 from myself. Okay. I I was actually also going to go 7.5, actually. Um, uh, but 
best match of the night was the tag team match it was very much uh, well follow that then and sadly no one else could uh, but enjoyable for the most part uh, I just wish they would remember that the Hell in the Cell is something that is you're supposed to it's like nobody ever gets in that was the entire original concept and it's kind of gone by the wayside I know but that that last match was a bit sort of pissing all over the concept really um it was a glory it was a it was a cage match with a roof on it as opposed to a home sound match that's what it was uh but yeah 7.5 uh best match tag team worst match uh Orton <laughs> Orton Rusev and not, I would agree and not for anything Rusev did Pink. uh it's a six out of ten for me. Um, yeah, if we we're going to put it in American grades, I'd say it's a very solid B minus. It's better than a C grade, but it's not good enough to be a solid B. Um, the highs were good, but the lows outnumbered them. Um, the high high points are obviously the more memorable spots. The two cell matches having the more of them more than anything else. The lows, unfortunately, were the matches that were cut short for obviously an overrunning pay per view for. You know the longer run time to confuse storylines which didn't you know we've come up with better stories to be told just sat here in two and a half hours uh for what could happen now obviously hindsight ha- can play a part in that but there's a good part that says if we can think of these why can't writers who get paid stupid amounts of money actually think of better ways to do these stories because we're and, dumb we're dumb smarks we don't know any better <laughs> But yeah, the the lows just outnumber the highs, unfortunately. And again, when you're going to have two profile Hell in a Cell matches, as Kevin said, um, one which obviously played well to the actual theory of keeping people out and one that didn't, and one being, once again, a testament to the tag team, the two top parts of that tag team division doing the most amazing work that we've seen from the division for quite a while, especially on the blue brand. Raw's coming that way, but SmackDown's definitely there. Um, the tag match obviously has match of the night with um, Martin Owens following very closely behind but again I think as Kevin mentioned earlier on when you have a pot spot uh, that completely eclipses the entire match you kind of lose what the match is there for well so I'm sure yeah well, I'm sure there's lots we could talk about in Talking Smack but as a quick rundown it's people doing really good promos but losing the persona they're meant to be and leading into what could possibly be future storylines to something else. Uh, especially AJ Styles, which Kevin, I think you pointed out earlier, yes. was, uh, or was it you, you Pete? Pete. I, I, mean, out, I was yeah. Pete. I'm not saying I was... Smack, so. All right. I, just... <laughs> of course, I, I, I forget. I forget. Said, forget. But... Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, as Pete was saying that, uh, yeah, evident of like AJ Styles wanting to stay away, you know, oh, now yeah. move on oh, from yeah, very much the true. US title. He'd want to get out of there. As- yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, we'll see what it comes from. Uh, as always, you can see much more contributions on the internet, specifically the Last Minute to site or the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash... This is where Kevin interjects. S- the- C- sl- well, because it's the way YouTube is, it's slash C slash Last Minute Continue. And I'm sure that'll be on the screen as we mention it. Uh, yeah, with the work of editing magic is there. Uh, in terms of Twitters, I'm sure Kevin has done some magic thing where they'll be available. But John, for the sake of the viewers, if we do this ever in an uh, audio thing, where can they find you on the social media? If you want to find me on the social medias, it is simply on Twitter at TurboXLR. And the man who does magic call live streams as well over on the Last Minute Continue stream page. Mr. Kevin Eva, where can they find you on the social medias? Uh, if you are so inclined, you can find me on Twitter at the Kevin Eva. There are several, but I'm the one. <laughs> uh, there, I and if you want to follow Last Minute Continue, it is at Last Min Continue uh, on Twitter as well. Uh, and as for you, Pete, 
Well, I was going to say you can also be seen doing multiple live streams during the week as well. But myself, if you want to follow this brand of bearded madness on the social media, you can follow me on my personal one on... Uh... <laughs> What should we really do? We can't call this the three dudes of three dudes of bit. Yeah, but look at this. This is our stable. This is our stable. <laughs> uh, if you want to follow me on the social medias, uh, you can find my personal one at Titans Creed. If you want to follow my YouTube one, you can follow it at The Gaming Phoenix. Uh, sorry, at Gaming Phoenix is, and uh, you can follow me doing some YouTube uh, speciality over on youtubecom slash Project Phoenix. Uh, thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. This has been Last Minute Kickout uh, with the three of us men with beards. Um, <laughs> until the next time, which will probably be in a, a couple of weeks' time after tables, ladders, and chairs, we'll see you next time. Beard day rocks. Beard, Beard day rocks. Day rocks. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is. Can that? Can that? Bye, bye. Bye-bye.